are not going back. America is ready for a new way forward. We are not going back. We, together, will chart a new way forward. We're not going back. Together, we'll move forward. We're not going back. Forward together. Folks, this has literally been the slogan of the Communist Party for the past 10 years. I'm not even joking. If you go to the Communist Party USA's website, three years ago, Communist co-chair Rosanna Cambron literally wrote an article titled, We're Not Going Back, Forward Together. Rosanna is a communist to and through, and she's unashamed of it. That's how we communists work. This is how you build that movement that's going to be the massive movement that we need to topple capitalism. It's not a coincidence that this just so happens to be Kamala Harris's campaign slogan, nor did she plagiarize it from the Communist Party. Communists have long acted as the kind of ideological undergird of the Democrat Party here in the United States, and Kamala Harris is just a continuation of that. Bye. Together, we'll move forward. Again, for the past decade, communists have been giving speeches all over the country where they have the banner, we're not going back, plastered behind them. Chicago has produced more outstanding communist leaders maybe than any other place around in a lot of ways. So this begs the question, do you continue to pretend that Kamala Harris is not influenced by communist ideology, choosing instead to blindly accept the Marxian policies that she's pushing forward? Or do you choose not to be the idiot they think you are? Hi, I hope by now that you realize that yesterday the Harris-Biden administration uh, made the determination that they could allow uh, Ukraine to use U.S.-made weapons and use it inside of Russia to launch inside of Russia. Now, what does that mean? Russia says it means it is a declaration of war. Now, every American should know that. You should know that as of yesterday that Harris and Biden determined that we were going to war. And the reason I wanted to talk about that is because just a couple of days ago, Taylor Swift, Steph Curry, John Legend all supported Kamala Harris. And I want them to know that what they just did is that they just committed their fans to go to war. To go to be drafted and so i'm going to call this war the celebrity war because they are getting young people to vote to send themselves to a war that we know that nobody is going to win in this will be the big war when they said uh ww3 will be the big war so i want to call this a celebrity war and i want every celebrity who endorse this war i want you to own it it's yours. It's the celebrity war. buy a home again and be a part of the American dream. We will eliminate regulations that drive up housing costs with the goal of cutting the cost of a new home in half. We think we can do that. The regulations alone cost 30 percent. Regulation costs 30 percent of a new home. And we will open up portions of federal land for large-scale housing construction. These zones will be ultra-low tax and ultra-low regulation. One of the great, really small business job creation programs, it will be of all time. We're going to open up our country to building homes inexpensively so young people and other people can buy homes. You can't buy them anymore. Millions of Americans will take part in setting these safe and beautiful communities, reviving the frontier spirit, and really, as I said, reviving the American dream. It's about the American dream. It's all about the American dream. We don't talk about American dream with these people in our office. They don't want to talk about the American dream because they're the exact opposite. They're the exact opposite. We also cannot ignore the impact that the flood of 21 million illegal aliens has had on driving up housing costs. 
That's why my plan will ban mortgages for illegal aliens in California. They're passing a law where they're going to give Calif we're going to give illegal aliens money to buy a house. But our soldiers, our veterans that are laying on the streets, they can't have them. You have soldiers right now laying on the streets of different cities, all Democrat run. They're laying on the streets in front of hotels, in some cases, luxury hotels. And you have illegal immigrants coming in and living in those hotels and laughing at our soldiers as they walk by into a luxury lobby. Is there something wrong with that thinking? Is there something wrong with our country? If Kamala is allowed to continue to let our country be invaded, we will face a fiscal Armageddon. These migrants are consuming hundreds of billions of dollars in benefits. Young True freedom is taken. It is not given. There is no black person or country in this world that took their freedom. Only one, Haiti. And they're paying for it. They've been paying for it, for taking their freedom. Why am I making this video? This is in reference to the black man that was lynched three days ago. And yes, I do realize this video I'm making right now will send the FBI to my front door. It will set, put me on a list and will definitely fuck me. I understand I have fucked myself by making this video, but I have to ask. U.S. government, should we have to turn to foreign governments to give us weapons and funding to destabilize this nation for our freedom? Is that what you need? Is that, is, is that what it's going to have to take? For us to call to Russia, China, North Korea, and Iran and ask for funding and weaponry to fight for our freedom. Is that what it's going to have to take? Because I made a video yesterday about this lynching. And in that video, I asked a question. Why our gangbangers ain't doing what they're supposed to be doing? Why our gangbangers from all the counties, all the cities, haven't gotten together, put rolled up in a car, gone to that city, and tore that fucking city up? You know what TikTok did to that video? They took away the sound. Read that. So they took away the sound for the video. I appealed it and look at their response. I appealed it. They claim they approved it since yesterday. So they have supposed to have returned the sound yesterday, but the content of what I'm saying, they cannot allow it to be out there. So I'm asking us like, do we have to start making videos? Like right now, it will be in Russia's best interest, China's best interest, Iran's best interest for a civil war to happen in these United States. Do we have to reach out to them for weapons and funding to get our, because we have to take our freedom and it has to be done violently. Because also, um, if I am post in two days, that means they come for me. I better kill somebody kill somebody listen man while we sitting here watching the clown show and I gotta admit I watched it too the rest of the world is mobilizing the rest of the world is laughing and they moving and they adopting and they pressing forward and they de-dollarizing. And we sitting here watching the shenanigans and the BS and they moving forward, adapting something different. And the dollar is dying. You ain't gotta trust me, you ain't gotta believe me. You can follow the narrative, you can look at mainstream media you can listen to them saying that everything is good. But 159 countries are participating in adapting a new system. And this new system has been moving for the last three years. This new system has already been used and utilized and been implemented in countries across the world. This new system has already been tried and already been tested. It's ready to be rolled out for the last three years. So when they say that it's being adapted, it's not a new system. 
they already worked the kinks out. In October, when BRICS nations do their summit and all these countries are trying to get into BRICS nations and putting in a request to join BRICS, it's not by coincidence. They see the shit show that America is doing. And they like, let us join. Listen, all I'm saying is you need to figure out what's happening around the world. Figure out ways that you can protect yourself. Again, the smartest people in the room are doing things like looking at digital assets. They're looking at cryptocurrencies. They're looking at silver, gold. I mean, stocks, different things to try to make sure that you hedge your bet against the dollar. Because if you got your money in just the dollar, unfortunately, unfortunately, if that's all you got your money in, I'm just saying, again, I'm not a financial advisor. This is not financial advice. Do your own research. All I'm doing is providing information and news that you won't find on mainstream media. Please, if you find other information, job notes, comments, I do read it. I'm listening. All right, family, these two clips are put back to back just so we can kind of keep abreast of what's going on outside the U.S. Not to alarm us. Remember, USA is still number one right now. However, with us breaking bad, that may change things. We're going to survive it anyway. We're built for this. The tethers are fleet. It's cool. We need them out the mix anyway. We need them out the mix anyway. But we're going to survive it. No matter what happens. No matter what happens in Amada. No matter what happens. We're going to survive it. Stay strong. Be one. That Well, she's black woman, which we can argue the black thing. So you can't, don't you dare, put some respect on her, put some respect on her, right? So that was one from Butch trying to school them because it's true. The ex we're trying to make for Kamala Harris, every time that Butch and Jill brought up the genocide, what's happening in Gaza, they kept trying to interrupt. Well, don't you think Kamala is gonna try to do something for the for those people and da da da? You gotta understand these people are DNC shills. And Charlemagne, don't let me get started on you. Cause Charlemagne, Charlemagne used to work on the radio when I lived in Columbia, South Carolina, when I went to the University of South Carolina. Charlemagne came from local radio. Charlemagne knows better. Don't let these people fool you. The question that was raised there was, did Russian social media yep. have an impact? And was I, an, you know, a beneficiary of that? And the Senate... But they said you repeatedly parroted Kremlin views and posted a well, campaign video Well, you know what they consider Moscow's a Red Kremlin Square. view? They consider uh, reparations a, a, a Kremlin, Kremlin view. view. Oh. They consider <laughs> they uh, the civil rights movement, actually, a yep. Kremlin view. Yep. They consider racial disparities a Kremlin view. Kremlin so these points, are, these, are wow. these are Department of Defense talking points. Yeah. And these... Let's go back. Because I want you to see the look on Angela's face. This is all going to be important. Pay attention to this conversation here about what is considered to be a Kremlin view. The question that was raised there was, did Russian social media yep. have an impact? And was I, an, you know, a beneficiary of that? And the Senate... But they said you repeatedly parroted Kremlin views and posted a well, campaign Well, you know what they consider Moscow's a Kremlin Square. view? They can... Look at the look on her face. That was her whole mood. During the interview, that was her whole mood. And this comment that Jill's about to make here applies actually towards Angela. I'll show you in just a second. Consider uh, reparations a, a, a Kremlin, Kremlin view. view. Oh. They consider <laughs> they uh, the civil rights movement actually yep. a Kremlin view. Yep. They consider racial disparities a Kremlin view. Kremlin so these are these are wow. these are Department of Defense talking points, yep. and these are unfortunately the DNC talking points as well, which repeatedly tries to smear me as a Russian agent, they even though it has been- idiot. Yes, and this has been no very specifically- room, yeah, yeah, Let's just be blunt about that. Found <laughs> lacking, and the report, get this, the report that was initially used to supposedly show that Russians had a social media campaign supporting me, that was written by a cybersecurity firm called the New Knowledge uh, Corporation. New Knowledge had to disband shortly after publishing that because they were exposed 
for yep. conducting an interference campaign themselves mm-hmm. in the 2017 Senate election in Alabama. And what did, how did they do that? They pretended to be a Russian influence campaign on social media. So they did exactly what they have accused the Russians of doing. They yep. actually did and Bless put it you. under the false uh, guise of being a Russian interference it's campaign. All, all... So you see, that's what they tried to use against them next. Oh, you sat at the table and with Vladimir Putin and da da da. Now, here's what's interesting about what Jill said there about the Kremlin talking points. It's time to dive into Angela Rye. I didn't know this. So, again, shout out to Dap, Ados Tribe, and Yvette Carnell, and all of you that tagged me because I didn't know. Did you guys know? How ironic it was that Angela Rye was a part of the Jill Stein Breakfast Club interview. Look at this, what he shared here. Black critics of Kamala Harris and Cory Booker push back against claims that they're Russian bots. Angela Rye and Joy Reid have speculated that American descendants of slaves using the hashtag ADOS, ADOS to critique Harris and Booker are Russian bots. That was February 13th, 2019. She been doing this, fam. That's her right there. She been doing this, fam. What? She been doing this, fam. She was doing this in 2019. So when Jill said, you know what else is a Kremlin talking point? Reparations. Whoa. She ain't like that. Did not like it. And so I'll show you where she was saying that. I said, no wonder Angela Rye folded her arms when Jill Stein mentioned reparations. This woman accused ADOS of being Russian bots. Oh, honey, the tea is hot with this one. And it is. I told you we were going to have some fun tonight. The tea is hot. So shout out to Yvette Carnell because she shared this video with me. Don't believe me? Listen to her say it yourself. The challenge I have now is if you follow the narrative, it is very much about um, we can only talk about reparations and issues specific to black Americans who are not immigrants because when other people come here, they're not looking out for our best interests. Number one, that's an overgeneralization. Number two, it's dangerous. I believe that it was paid for by Russia. and I'm not saying not that everyone who uses that hashtag now is a Russian bot, but I believe it originated from Russian bots in the same way that the, um, some of the stuff around the crime bill happened in 2016. There were some lower clearly. So this was Angela Rye speaking to a room of people, telling people that ADOS, this was all, they were being paid by Russia and that they were Russian bots. This is Angela Rye saying that. And the same woman just happens to be sitting in the room to interview Jill Stein and wants to bring up, oh, you sat at the table across from Vladimir Putin. First, she lied and said you sat right next to him. She didn't sit right next to him. He was at the table across from her and she never even got the chance to speak to him. She's talked about this multiple times. She was investigated about this and she was cleared of any wrongdoing. So you got Angela Rye here. Look, all black folk, no. Black faces in high places, and we're going to talk about these high places. Actively working against an organization that is trying to push for reparations for American descendants of slave. That's what she was doing. And she's mad. She's big mad. She folded her arms in the interview. She's really upset because her candidate and her friend, Kamala Harris, has no freaking black agenda. None. She wants to focus on the way that people want to pronounce Kamala Harris's name. I call BS on that. People mispronounce my name all the time. Do you see me getting mad and screaming and like, oh, it's it's Sabrina, not Serena. It's Sabrina, not Selena. People mispronounce it all the time. She wanted to put more focus and frustration and anger about the mispronunciation, mispronunciation of Kamala's name then she was to get angry about 
what Jill Stein was saying to her about what the Democratic Party has been doing to third party candidates. She was more angry about Kamala's name than she was about the genocide in Gaza. She was more angry at Kamala's name than she was about the fact that Kamala has no black agenda, no reparations plan. She was more concerned about that. But then you got to know where this woman comes from. Angela Rye. Angela Rye comes right from Capitol Hill. She worked with the Congressional Black Caucus, another damn group of black faces in high places that don't do shit. She worked with them. How many of you knew that? She comes right from the Hill. How you think she'd get to be in all these little spaces? She's just another DNC shill spewing DNC propaganda, calling black organizations, Russian propagandists, saying that these people were paid by Russia. That's why she's in those spaces. She starts off the interview telling them, Kamala Harris, I know her, I know her. And she's interviewer, of course you know her son, of course you know her, you're in the right spaces. So Angela's job, going into this interview was to ruin Jill Stein and to push up and protect her friend Kamala Harris. Everyone needs to understand that. She didn't like it too much because Jill Stein had to tell her she had white supremacy talking points and she did. Let's listen. Either you win or lose this election, there's really no in between. Dr. Stein, right. um, in 2002, you ran for governor of Massachusetts and you lost. In 2004, you ran for state representative in Massachusetts and you lost. In 2006, you ran for secretary of the Commonwealth. You also lost. In 2010, you ran for governor again, this time against the first black um, governor in Massachusetts, Deval Patrick. You lost. In 2012, you ran against this country's first black president um, with, and you got just um, less than one half of 1% of total votes cast. In 2016, you ran against Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton, um, losing... Uh, significantly with 1.4 million votes cast for you, but zero electoral college votes, which I agree with y'all needs to be abolished. <laughs> but um, 136 <laughs> million people voted um, and you lost that election as well. So I want to know what the pathway to victory is for you in okay. 2024. It That's can't just be. I, I'd like to yeah, provide. So notice that Angela Rye didn't mention any of the races that Jill Stein won. So Jill Stein has served in local office before. Notice she didn't mention those. Right. Notice she had to swoop in there. You ran for governor against the black governor. Governor Deval Patrick didn't do a damn thing for black people here. OK, let's stop like applauding these people just because it's a black face in a high place. Governor Deval Patrick didn't do anything for black people here in Massachusetts. He stood over in his little corner in Milton, Massachusetts and hung out with the bougie white folk. Let's just keep it real, son. But let me let her finish. Can I respond, But I would like to respond. This is the framing of the empire and the oligarchy and white supremacy and colonialism, which wants you to feel that resistance is futile. This is about voter blaming and voter shaming. Let me just 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 let me to, what you're to, not going to say is that I'm ever parroting anything uh, at the hands of white supremacy. This is something that's very different. This is me asking you again. It's a binary oh, well, I'm choice just in pointing an out that these it are is either the talking a win points. or a lot. No, these it's not are the same point. talking points. No, no, no. That the I didn't get my talking uses. This is. Yes, yeah, she does. She uses the same talking points as the DNC. But let me go ahead and say something here. First of all, it is not fair to compare a grassroots campaign to an ad, to a campaign and a, particularly a grassroots party, to a party that has millions of dollars and is backed by Wall Street and the military industrial complex. You can't even put them on the same footing. You can't. So everyone needs to understand that. The Green Party is a grassroots party. The Democratic Party is not. The Republican Party is not. That's like, should I make the comparison now or later? I'll make it now and later. That's like saying, and put let's put it this way. That's like saying you have a student that's at a public high school and you have a student at a private school, pri private high school. So public, private. 
that's like going to the student at the public university and telling them, how dare you not succeed? You have been in school for four years, ninth, 10th, 11th, 12th grade. How dare you not prevail? How dare your grades, how dare your GPA not be higher than the kid at the private university? Obviously, the side that has this has a better chance of succeeding. You know, it's just common fucking sense for certain agendas um, as, as an advocate, but and you have never won an election as a candidate. The one Is that a party. winning strategy? So you, in order to win, you know, uh, a journey of a thousand miles begins with one step. And in this case, this it's many one, steps. Two, let me three, point four, out, five, six, let me point steps. out, please, you need to compare the Green Party, not with those who are taking money from APAC and the war machine and Wall Street. I'm You've got to compare us, record. excuse me, you have to compare us to other grassroots, non-corporate. So do you see how rude she was? And by the way, it started out this way. If you watch the full interview, she had that attitude. She came in like hostile. She came in ready to fight from the very beginning. But yeah, you are parroting in white supremacist talking points, Angela. This is one of the most effective tools of white supremacy is to get someone with a black face to do it to, for you. That's Angela Rod. That's Charlemagne the God. Just because they host a show called The Breakfast Club and they talk about hip hop doesn't mean that they're not pushing white supremacy from time to time when the Democratic Party tells them to, God damn it. That's Barack Obama. That's Kamala Harris. That's Jim Clyburn. Don't be twisted. They get people like them to do it for them. And she'll go along with it because she wants the money and she wants to be noticed. You want a lot of attention, Angela. You got a lot of attention today and yesterday. You wanted that attention, so now you got it. Oh, we, okay. we need, she said I was the talking voice of a white supremacy. That was my disappointment earlier. May I finish, please? Like may, I, may I get to my point? May I please get to my point? Let, 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 let me please. finish, please. Thank you. Um, you're trying. You see this? So that's the end of the clip, but you see this? She was doing that before the white supremacist comment, because the reality is this did not go the way that Angela wanted it to, because she called your ass out, which other people should have done. You guys have had Nikki Haley, Vivek Ramaswamy, Candace Owens, all these other people that are conservatives come on to the breakfast club and you never treated them the way that you treated Jill Stein and Butch Ware. This was an attack from the get-go, and that was the assignment that they had. Go in and attack them and destroy their campaign. Now, you guys may be wondering, why would they even have to do that? If people are saying it's not a serious campaign, why would they even have to do that? We'll show you in just a second. But Dop, Adas Tribe said it again. Angela Rye was pissed when Jill Stein said she was using white supremacist talking points. <laughs> This was the moment when Angela Rye showed us that she is a boule, boule key holder because this reaction was uncalled for. These are the Negroes that stand by in the way of any black progress. They are happy with the status quo. And they go on to say here, Jill Stein, I will end the genocide in Gaza. I will give black people reparations. I will create multiple black Wall Streets across the country. I will fight to end disproportionate police brutality against black people. And this is Angela Rye. Like, I, I've never seen anything like this before in my life. I'm like, how can you be angry about that? You know why she was mad? Because it's better than what Kamala has. Because when you look at Jill Stein's website, you look at the platform, you see it's actually detailed and there's substance there, there's meat there. You look at Kamala's website, you look at her platform, you got two pieces of bread, but you ain't got no meat in between. Every now and then we gotta have some meat. That's why she was mad. She know Kamala Harris is an empty suit. She knows it. I'm gonna show you a couple more responses here. Again, Dab Aras tribe. <laughs> um, oh, is this the Kremlin one again? Yeah, I think I, I played that one. Interview on the Breakfast Club and damn, Angela Rye be shilling for the Democrats so bad it's pathetic. You see, this got a lot of people's attention. Uppity African.
Jill Stein went on The Breakfast Club, and it's telling to see how hostile Angela Rye is to the prospect of people exploring all electoral options. These tweets have a lot of views. Look at this. Over 308.3K views, over 3,000 likes. See, they expose their self. Reggie from Boston. I am truly wondering if we will look back after November and realize that it was Angela Rye's stunt that sank the Harris campaign. She came on to the Breakfast Club to take down Stein and Ware, but ended up proving why the American people deserve better than Harris and Trump. I'm not going to tell many voting members in the United States House of Representatives, Republican, Democrat, and Independent. How many total? How many total yes. are there? What is it? 600 some? No, you know. it's 435. How many voting members in the United States House of Representatives, Republican, Democrat, and Independent? How many total? How many total yes. are there? What is it? 600 some? No, you know. it's 435. So a couple of things I want to point out. They're talking about the number of House representatives, right? So I think Jill said 600, and some people are like 535. Uh, people came up with different numbers, by the way. I'm seeing them even in the chat. It's 538, 535. And I'm pointing this out not to call you guys out, but to prove a point. For AOC to criticize her about this, it's one thing to not have a number exactly correct. But the reality is most people don't know that. Most people don't know the answer to that. And I've seen a number of people online saying, oh my God, how does she not know that? Uh, I can pick up the phone right now and text all of my friends and I bet you most of them don't know. Most people don't know. Most people are not paying attention. So most people are not into politics to this extent that we all are. So there's that. Now, some people can say, well, Jill's running for president, so she should know that or whatever. Okay, it is what it is. But the reality is, is that really something you need to focus on? Or do you need to focus on her policies? So here is Angela asking her about the number of House representatives instead of focusing on the platform and the policies that Jill was talking about to her. When she talked about policy, Angela wanted to try to cut her off every time. And another thing, for the people that are saying, oh, Angela knows, Angela has a computer right in front of her, which she looked at throughout the interview. So you don't know if Angela actually knew that either if she didn't look it up first. But what's funny is about living in a glass house and throwing these damn stones. Because AOC seems to forget and you know Z-Squirrel, don't mess with Z-Squirrel. This account finds every damn thing, so you better not piss off Z-Squirrel. I'm telling you right now. Z-Squirrel seemed to find a video where AOC apparently didn't know what the three branches of government was. And she was in Congress. Here's you, a sitting member of Congress, being unaware of how many chambers Congress has and what the three branches of government are. Judicial, executive, legislative. Listen to this. Is that should we, and if we work our butts off to make sure that we take back all three chambers of Congress, uh, rather all three chambers of government, the presidency, the Senate, and the House in 2020, we can't start working in 2020. Is that should we, and if we work our butts off to make sure that we take back all three chambers of Congress, uh, rather all three chambers of government, the presidency, the Senate, and the House in 2020, we can't start working in 2020. Now you tell me what's more damning. Some when Jill Stein said that 61% of the voters who voted for her in 2016 would not have voted at all. And Angela Rice said that's unreliable exit poll data without giving any counteracting data. It shows that the Democrats really believe that every vote that isn't for Republican or Democrat is just a disgruntled Democrat is a very tired point. There are people in America, in the United States, who would rather vote for somebody they believe in than vote for the person who they think will win. And whether or not you believe that is a wasted vote, 
doesn't change the fact that they're going to vote their conscience. And instead of trying to court those voters, you think you can shame them into being who you want them to be. I think that is a mistake. I love, I think it was in, in that interview where Dana Bash says, you know, the police have gone through 11 months of recordings of calls and they've only found two Springfield residents calling to complain about Haitian nigger, Haitian nigger, Haitian nigger uh, migrants taking geese from ponds. Only two calls. And I think one lesson in this whole story, people don't care about geese. Uh, people really hate geese. You know, they, they, all things considered, yeah. I think people would prefer Haitian <laughs> migrants to come and take the geese off the golf course, right? So it's, it's pets, yeah. it's uh, the cats and dogs has become the, 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 the standard. Ge- geese clearly don't, don't matter. I mean, they, they, I, I read online, they're protected. Black boys are hard to raise. You're just believing in. If you think black boys are hard to raise, then you believe that black boys are inherently more unruly, aggressive, and argumentative. And they're not. That's just... As a black male teacher that used to be a black male student in a white woman's space, black boys are treated differently. We're treated differently because we're taught that black boys are inherently unruly, disruptive, and violent. Wild, if you will. And must be controlled. This is a form of... So you've been conditioned to believe that a misguided black boy with a strong will is out of control when it's really believing a idea to keep us all in bondage. For us as black people, it actually comes as a response to what was happening during Jim Crow and this is a way to protect our children from what could happen to them if they did not obey. But it's 2024 and we have better resources and we have better scientific data that supports the idea that we can work with them a different way. So let's deconstruct this together. I offer one-on-one consultations and coachings or you can get my book. Links in my bio. And look how tender that is. Oh, now that's melting your mouth. Oxtail. I'm a Gen Xer and I remember growing up, we used to be able to get oxtails for $2.99 a package. Okay, not $2.99 a pound. I'm talking about a whole fucking package of oxtails. Hell, half the time, the butcher for my grandmother just wrapped the whole damn tail up. Charge her a little bit of nothing. We head to the house. Slap it, flip it, and rub it down. Give us a little bit of time. The whole house is smelling. We're going to sit down and we're going to eat fat fool. Fat fool. They didn't know what to do with it. Didn't know how to cook it. They didn't think that part of the uh, cow was useful. So you fast forward a little bit and guess what the fuck happened? Somebody went and told the butcher. Somebody went and told the butcher, oh no, this is good meat. It's tender, fall right off the bone. Let me show you how to cook it. And now we can't afford to eat it. The colonizers, on the other hand, they done took the little recipes and shit like that, that we have had. And now we on TikTok. Sizzle, sizzle. What the fuck? While our people are pushing away from our culture because y'all want to be new blacks. The colonizers are soaking it up, flipping it around on us and making buku money. And we can't even afford to buy the foods that we grew up on. I said all of that to say this. Gatekeep. Fucking gatekeep. Because what we take for granted right now may not even be available to our kids later on if we don't. The woman who posted on Facebook about Haitians eating pets says it was based on a rumor. She's filled with regret. And now because of that fallout, she fears for her safety. I'm a former reporter, and if you missed headlines, I got you. All right, cue the violin. Erica Lee is her name, and let's show her face because I am a tad petty. All right, she put in a Facebook post that her neighbor told her that her daughter's friend lost a cat, and that cat was found strung up from a branch outside the home of a Haitian family. But now Erica admits she had no first-hand knowledge of this claim, and that neighbor she was talking about heard it from an acquaintance. So basically, Erica was being messy. Um, Now, obviously, she had no idea it would go viral and that J.D. Vance and Donald Trump, who both want to run the country, would run with this rumor. In fact, Trump is still running with this rumor. And because of that rumor, Haitians are feeling unsafe in Springfield. But back to Erica, because this is about her. She's feeling the hate. She says uh, she wants everyone to know that she's not racist. You know why? Because she has a daughter who's half black. She herself is also of mixed race. Huh? and a member of the LGBTQIA plus community. She wants you to know that for some reason. Um, now, listen, for the record, the influx of Haitian migrants has presented some infrastructure issues in Springfield, but it looks like eating pets is not one of them. 
Uh, I'm saying that's news to me. We thought we'd record the fact that our Bosnian neighbors are barbecuing a dog. You might be looking at this and saying, that's not a dog. But Go up closer so you can look at his tail. Here's you can Here's, you can see, the tail. Oops. You can see the tail and an open fire. I'm not sure what's on the underbelly of it. With a little kid out there. Keep saying a dog, a dog, we got a dog. So, that's really fun. They're barbecuing a damn dog in their backyard. And our cat's missing. And our cat's missing. Yeah. Don't I, I don't want to even see a case like this happen in Iowa. Let no. boy. I it's gonna be another story of John Wick. I tell you. What. But everybody going around saying this woman wasn't Haitian, the one who ate the cat, right? And they said it wasn't in Springfield, correct? Okay. Yeah, no, I come with facts. You need part. You need to go watch part two on this one. This is the police report, part one. They said it happened in Springfield. It happened in Springfield, okay? You see it? All right. Go to part two. Stop believing what the news is putting out there when the government is in control of the narrative that they put out. Going on in Springfield. Here is part two, page two of a police report. All Haitian. What it says here? Four geese stolen. Yeah, how can what I are, help you? Uh, you live here? Yeah, this is my place. This is your place? Mm -hmm. You, you, you're renting. What is this, like an Airbnb situation? One of those Airbiz, um, air no, rentals? No, sir, I, I, I bought the home with my own you money. You bought the home? Yes. Really, in this neighborhood? They, oh, okay, I was unaware. <laughs> the old neighbors here are good people. Really yeah. good, fine folks, you no know. Word. You know, they're they're really keeps the neighborhood nice and strong, real complete, real good people oh. here. You know what I'm saying? What do you what do you hoop? You look athletic. No, I work no. at T Mobile. You you work at T Mobile. No, yeah. I'm just saying you got a frame on you. Yeah. You know, um to afford a home in this neighborhood, I imagine that you uh yeah, you I... probably play some type of sport. No. Really? No. Oh man, what the Okay. Yeah. Just me, oh. and, me, and family, the two kids here. You got kids too. Yeah. All right. Well, you tell them to stay out of trouble. I. Yeah. We, okay. This so. type of neighborhood, you know, we we had a couple ruffians come in. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. A couple folks. They were up to no good. Just want to make yeah, you sure you always got to keep an eye out, out of us. on on who you who you got moving okay. in the neighborhood. All right. Well, thank you. All right. Well, all yeah. right. You know, um, what's your name? Mike. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Wasn't sure if I was gonna expect like one of those LeBron names or nope. something. One of those. <laughs> just Michael. Just Michael. Yeah. All right. Well, that's a good honest name. Mm, All like right. Michael you live Jordan. up to that. All yeah. right. Well, you put her here. Okay. Huh? <laughs> Have a good one. We created history together. Along with our black American brothers and sisters, we ended up creating some of the best music in the world. Yes, I'm talking about hip hop. This shit get bad. This shit get rough. You pay what? It came back what? Nah, some ain't not enough. To Frazine Taylor, who died this summer, but tells us how her legacy will live on through her work and the thousands of lives she touched. It may seem like a blur of information. But if you know what you're looking for, like genealogist Frazine Taylor, small clues quickly reveal the story of a real person. I used to like detective stories. That's what family history is. You're having a little piece of here and a little piece there. For some black Americans, they are pieces of a picture shattered by systemic racism. At Alabama State University, Taylor spent decades as an archivist sifting through records where humans are identified only by numbers. Names are misspelled and racially segregated records leave holes in family trees. How important is it for particularly young people that they know their history self-worth that, that's important 
I can sit here and tell you about my family all the way down to some parts of slavery. And I, I feel proud of that. In the decades after the Civil War, black Americans owned an estimated 16 million acres of land. But by the turn of the century, 90% of that had been lost or stolen, amounting to a near $326 billion loss in wealth. Will we ever know the full extent of enslaved people and their involvement? Well, no, we won't. No, we won't. Because? Because, because the records are not there. I have that one. For Josephine Bowling McCall, Taylor helped uncover the truth about her father's life and death. In doing family history, we, we start with ourselves and work backwards. Elmore Bowling was lynched in 1947 when McCall was just five years old. Some people were lynched for merely crossing the street in front of a white person. My father was lynched because he was doing good. He had not committed a crime. They wanted to cut him down because he was making the wrong example for blacks in the community. And that wrong example was? Achievement and helping others to achieve. How long did you stay mad? I've never been mad. How would you describe it, Miss McCall? Hurt. Hurt. When we spoke, Taylor was partially retired and undergoing chemo, but her passion for teaching was untouched. Talk to the oldest person in your family. Up until her death, she continued to encourage the next generation to keep looking at the past, sharing her knowledge with archivist Kashonda Murphy. The past is important because it gives us insight into the future. If you don't know where you're from, I mean, you don't know what's ahead of you. Even truckers would avoid that route if they weren't 100% certain that they could. Just a few more. This this year. And let's never forget. They still trying to rule his um, death of suicide right now. All of them black. All of them went to historically sundown towns and were told not to take those routes. And they took them anyway. And this is what the results of them taking those routes were. It's not in the past. It's right now. What does a kata mean? That is American. That's oh, a, it means that's a, American. That's a black American, actually. So Not, that's... Oh, that, yes. That, so, so that's... Well, well, that's, that's, no, no, no. For, that, okay, so do you know what FBA is? FBA. <laughs> he be on the other side now. He be on Nigeria <laughs> Twitter for real. I don't like. know what FBA is. Okay, okay, okay. So FBA is like... It means foundational black American. Oh, man. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> so... We talk the, about it. They told me Akata was like the N word. That's what they said. Is that not true? In a sense, it just means American person, right? It's a Black American. So uh, <laughs> it's a Black. No, you're good. You're good. <laughs> that's I mean, okay. Really. That's what. That's what it boils so down to. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, okay, all right, that's what I thought. She was okay. like, I knew it. She, I knew she was dissing me. Yeah. That's crazy. But y'all don't use it like that, though. It just means black American. No, we I don't use it as a dog. It's not a derogatory term for us now. Okay. You sure? Because I was work. I used to work at Chateau Alon, and it was me, and I had a bunch of Nigerian yes. coworkers, and they always called me that. Uh -huh. And I was like, what does that mean? And they was like, oh, nothing. You're our friend. <laughs> so whole time they was, oh, whole okay. time. <laughs> Okay. The whole time, but whole time. Okay. Yeah. What's going on, back family? So I this whole clip, I had to put this one in here because they're trying to change the narrative. It's not a derogatory term for us now. That means it's always been. That means it always has been a derogatory term. Akata, we're not gonna let them change the narrative. We don't have a derogatory term for them as a whole. That African booty scratch, y'all dead. That that was high side. We don't have a term like, oh, you see them the Akata, you Akata. Stray cat, whatever. If you look at a stray cat, a stray cat is what? Manged, crazy, and unusually feral. That's not a compliment. So, family, don't let them get by on that Akata mess. 
Then let them try to get slick on it. Call them out every goddamn time. All right. So the Republican Party is now filing a motion that is basically enacting what people of color have been saying this entire time is that in the Constitution, it states that we are not a full human being, which means that they don't recognize us as a full human being, but two thirds of a man. So the United States Congress is now attempting to block Kamala Harris from essentially becoming president of the United States by challenging that theory aligned in the Constitution. For me, myself, as a nigga, I'm happy. I need y'all to know that. That means that I can contest all this shit. I don't have to pay rent. I don't have to pay taxes. Technically, I don't have to do any of this shit. Because if y'all say that she not, that black people are not considered to be 100% human, oh, baby, we all finna line up for all them benefits entitled to, them, to every other illegal alien in this country. Because if that's the case, we are entitled to every single benefit allotted to every single immigrant coming through that border. Y'all don't consider us to be human, which means that we are illegal. Y'all don't consider us to be citizens, okay? They say that technically because she's black, she's not a citizen. Okay, well, that means that we are entitled to everything that everybody else is, is entitled to. So, yeah, I'm about to get my skip to my loo, skip my ass. As soon as that, that bill goes through, I'm going to skip my, to my loo, my ass down to that office and sign up for them benefits because y'all y'all tripping. Y'all got us messed up. I don't think that y'all actually thinking about the blowback that's going to happen as a result of that because you should have just told us if that was the case. If y'all was going to move the line like this in the midst that is going on, you should have just told us. This ain't Monopoly, baby, and it damn sure ain't chess. Y'all cheating y'all way through this whack-ass game that y'all call life. Of course, I ask this question rhetorically. I don't believe white supremacy is America's problem. What bothers me is how the Democrats continue to play black people for fools. Several years ago, then Chicago Mayor Lori Lightfoot ran her campaign on the promise that she would make the city of Chicago safer. And it is no secret that predominantly black neighborhoods like mine suffer disproportionate violence. What did she do upon being elected? She declared Chicago a sanctuary city. Not for those suffering violence, but for newly arrived migrants. Why do they get the sanctuary and not our lifelong taxpayers? I have no issue with migrants. Believe me, trust me as individual people. I've taken them into my church where we are all children of God. My issue is with our politicians playing us off on each other. That's my issue. More recently, politicians in California and Illinois dangled the promise of reparations for black people. Neither state owned slaves and yet there was redlining and block busting and, and the like. We heard rumors that blacks in San Francisco might get upward to hundreds of millions of dollars in reparations, cash, homes for dollar tax-free annual payments, etc. I knew it was nothing but a scam, and I had to sit there and watch too many blacks that I know talk about what they would do with the money that was coming their way. Then the politicians in California said, never mind, no cash payments for you. We'll just give you more services, which means what? More money for government employees. Like the Vegas casinos, the government always wins in the end. And then to add insult to injury, the same government announces that it will give 150,000 to newly arrived migrants, which means what? Black taxpayers will be the ones helping footing this bill. This is not even playing by the Democrats anymore. This is outright abuse. If you're black, you shouldn't be voting for Trump. If you think that black people should continue voting for the Democratic Party, then you are as delusional as Cardi B thinking that her husband is going to stop cheating. We are pushing 100 years of the Democratic Party whoring us out for votes and then throwing us to the side the second that they are done with us. But before we even discuss black issues, let's talk about American issues. Our border is wide open. The US dollar is almost as meaningless as Zimbabwe's. Our sitting president shows visible signs of onset dementia, but the woman that you want us to vote for is telling us to ignore that. And look how many wars have started in the last three and a half years. Do you want more? Meanwhile, notice how Donald Trump had Kim Jong-un and Miss Putin sitting with their legs crossed and acting like they had some decorum. So now let's talk about the issues that are impacting black people. Oh wait, I already did. Because black people are dealing with the exact same issues that other people in this country are dealing with. So stop thinking that we need to be some kind of segregated vote. It's tired, it's played out, it's late, and black people will be unapologetically voting 
voting for Donald Jaquan Trump this November. We be acting like we scared these young niggas. These are the chosen ones, bro. These kids are fearless, bro. I seen a video, two young niggas trying to get chased by the police. They wouldn't chase them. They started chasing the police and the police were trying to get away. Now think about, now think about this. When you was growing up, your parents was talking mess, family business, church, talking God. So subconsciously, we millennials, we got that little fear in us. We don't want to go against God, right? Now think about the elder millennials who born in 86 who got like 16, 17 year olds now. What you in the house talking about? Fuck the government. Fuck the education system. I'm finna, home, I'm finna get a homestead. I'm finna get off grid. I'm finna, I'm finna buy black. You shop black. Everything is anti-establishment. We putting this in their heads. Fuck the police. Then Trayvon happened. And we really on some fuck the police shit. These young niggas don't care. They the chosen ones. We need to stop being scared of these young niggas and embrace them. These is warriors, bro. We, these kids with a warrior spirit, they don't fear shit. But if we fear them and criticize them, all of that potential, this system that y'all always talking about fighting, they got the potential to fight it. They the ones. They are babies. Let these young niggas be free because if we don't re redirect that energy, I ain't gonna say, I don't. I'm gonna just say this. Farrakhan said it best. They're the most fearless generation we ever had. They're just misguided. That's what I'm saying. Now, I'm saying we, but if we scared of them and we, and we criticizing them, check them young nigga, man. Check them. But show them some love. Because if they if they keep directing the energy at each other, it ain't going to be none of them left. We You got to start embracing. When you see a group of five with a shiesty mask on, them your people. Go embrace them. Don't be scared of them. Because if you scared of them, think about what the rest of the world think. They already scared of us in general. Feed them young niggas, man. Show them niggas some love. They hungry for knowledge. They hungry for knowledge. Oh. If you're not going to stop and talk. Because they already get it. The school ain't going to teach them shit. Look at what their parents going through. Their parents can't afford a home. Niggas out here on TikTok shop, niggas out here trying to slang, hustle, niggas trying to grind, trying to get several streams of income because just having a job ain't enough. They taking Social Security. They trying to raise the raise the retirement age. These young niggas know. Ain't nothing for in, in this world. I ain't finna be no slave to this shit. And, and, and it's not even about going to prison no more. They ain't shooting. They ain't killing over money. They would rather die. They don't give a fuck about dying. That's powerful. Because you keep saying we, you know, and it's like your kind of connection with the black community, but you're Cuban. Like, I'm hard. black first. Yeah. I'm black first. So what I, I always ask, tell like, people. What, like, what, how you identify Wait, but yourself. Are you full Cuban? I'm, I'm full Cuban. I thought yeah. he was black too. I know. But every, I am black. No, here's like, everyone thinks that you are like okay, the so, black so, lineage. Right, like, so, you know, like, let me explain how it works. Let me explain how it works. Mm. You know, this is another thing that I feel like we as black people get caught up in. That, Semantics. that separates us as opposed to uniting us. We get caught up in where the ship dropped us off versus where the ship picked us up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? We all come from the same root. It's just a tree with different branches. The same boat that dropped, that picked up your ancestors picked up my ancestors. Only they dropped yours off here. They, they made a pit stop in the Caribbean and dropped mine off. Mm -hmm. but, but my ancestors still dealt with slavery, mm -hmm. you know, still dealt with being, you know, having having their family and their lives ripped from them and having to come back from colonialism and slavery, mm. you know. So and, and it's not just African-Americans, it's Afro-Cubans, it's Afro-Dominicans, it's Afro-Puerto Ricans. Like all these people got to get out of their colonialized minds and stop thinking, oh, I'm not this, I'm this. OK, yeah, you can be Latin, and but, the you, and but the you're black first. And the separatism right. that takes us apart when we all have the same struggle. We all see 100 percent. Because when exactly. I walk into a room, they ain't thinking, oh, we're going to give him a pass because he's, he's Latin. Yeah. 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 Or if a cop pulls me over, he's not like, oh, OK, I'm not going to shoot him or I'm not going to beat his ass because he's Cuban. Mm -hmm. No, yeah. I'm black. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And I'm dealing with the same struggle. So we all got to got to unite and 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 fight for the struggle together because we're all dealing with the exact same struggle. Let's give it up for Laz Alonzo. Laz Alonzo, boom, I'm black. Yes, I'm full Cuban, but I'm black. He gets it. See, that's a non-tether mindset. He's still not FBA, but he's a rider in that. But it's for, she's out of Canada. And I've heard some of her interviews, some of her reddits, you know, she bounced up and down on white boys and all that stuff. And all they're supposed to have like 10, 11 inches. No, she's not married. But we, you see, not like us. Canada, Drake, they're not like us. They're not like us. Shout out to Laz Lonzo. Show the man some love. He stood 10 toes down. He stood on black business, even though he is not FBA.
Okay, so let me explain how to tell when you actually are applying for a ghost job. The posting date. The posting date is very important to telling when a ghost job is. If it was posted four days ago, five days ago, there's a high chance that you shouldn't click on that link because that is showing that, oh, hey, guess what? We're, we're hiring now, we're hiring now, we're hiring now. That's the first thing. If it doesn't have a timestamp, that is also a very, just don't do it. Check the dot job description. Job description matters a lot when it comes to checking if a ghost job. If the job description is something insane, and I mean insane, where it doesn't really describe the job, that is also a way to tell when it is a ghost job. That is also a method to do that. Best solution, and this is gonna sound psychotic considering Indeed and things that have variety and some people can't get up and do it, call the job. Call the job or go up there. Calling the job is the best way to do it, trying to figure out how to get the contacting manager or call the job and say, hey, I just got told to figure out where your manager is and they said they had a job for me and figure that out. Calling the place is the best solution. Even if you have to go through the minutia of figuring out how to find the number, perhaps when I say perhaps, if you go on Reddit, if you go on Reddit and look and try to find where they put the jobs low number, the number is the best way. For instance, calling McDonald's. You can't just call the store McDonald's. It is a lot more difficult to do that. But if you call the hiring part of McDonald's and ask for the manager number, the number line to that store, a lot easier to do that. Simple way to do that. The job I worked for, the best way to get a job at the job that I had, you had to call me, like my direct line. Like you had to call my direct, I had a direct line. That was the difficult aspect. I was in an office, you had to call my direct line and ask for my extension. Figure out the extensions, figure out the small minutia of that. That's a way to do it. Some companies will not hire you unless you can figure that out because it shows initiative, it shows drive. That's the best way to do it. If you see a job listing online that you're not getting a call back, you're wondering, I applied for 100 jobs, why am I not getting a call back? This is so strange. Yeah, because you didn't go the extra mile to find the actual numbers. That's, it seems scummy and weird to do that, but that's how ghost jobs work. Kind of like ghost restaurants, where you see a restaurant where it's within another restaurant, like Mr. Beast Burger, those restaurants right there, that's Reese back there. There's a bunch of things that you can look out for. There's so many methods in which you could do that. It's, it's very, very, very hard to do though. If you see it on Indeed as well, cross-referencing the company website to make sure that the company in itself is hiring and not just on Indeed, that happens too, where they'll post a job listing on Indeed or some job searching website and they won't have it on the website, that's messed up too. A lot of companies have social media. A lot of companies locally have social media. Check the company's social media and see if they're actually doing the hiring rate. You'll see a job that says we're offering for 25 an hour, but it says up to 25 an hour, up to 25 an hour. The starting rate could be $17. Don't be manipulated by that. Don't accept a job that won't hire you at the higher rate. That is also an issue there. And as I said prior, contacting the company directly, that's what you can do. Just look at this comment right here. I'm South African. I know more than you. Cotton. Hold on. Come here. Cotton. If you don't know what this reference is to, he's trying to be a racially targeted towards black Americans who were enslaved in America and were known to be picking cotton. So this South African man is trying to be little or say references to cotton. Cotton. <sighs> Exposing yourself. Exposing yourself. I wonder if any South Africans or the Africans are going to stand up to this particular comment right here because this is wild. That's diabolical. And I was going to sleep. Cotton. Why they want to kill Donald Trump? Question mark. And Elon retweets, and no one is even trying to assassinate Biden slash Kamala? Hmm. Wild choice of words. Wild fucking tweet. This is literally Hall of Fame. This post has been deleted because the shit has been deleted. I saw it when it was made, and I didn't understand. I didn't get it. I just was like, what the, what the fuck am I looking at? And it's not even on no super political shit. This is crazy. Even if you, I don't give a fuck who you is. If you live in America... To tweet this to to 36 million people and you know this is this is crazy you do you know you know the country you live in but you know what they notorious for i wouldn't fucking play with these people like this this is the type of money i aspire to have to not be scared to even say this shit
Because nobody else's brain would have even let them, even if you would have typed this shit up, nobody's mind would have let them hit sin. And what he trying to say is that I think it's Kamala Biden and that side trying to, they trying to get rid of him. That's what he trying to say. And he could have just retweeted this and be like, bro, I think they trying to kill him. I think it's them. I think it's the government trying to do it. A lot of people might have actually agreed with you, possibly. You might, you might have actually got the effect you wanted. But this, when you're talking to the American people, you know, critical thinking is not what we have. They're not going to see this and get you a little message. No, they're going to see this and say, oh, he must be, he must want somebody to spin on Kamala and Biden. And then somebody fucking, come on, man. Elon, let me talk to you. The amount of fucking common sense that a person would have to have to know what you meant by this. Hopefully that's what you meant. But the amount of common sense they would have to have to know what you meant. This 36 million people, it's, it's 10 of them that have that. The rest of them got exactly what the fuck I just said from this. Meaning that I think Elon is saying he want us to spin. So yeah, between this tweet from Elon and that ball up top tweet, shit, we might be going into OT in 24, I ain't lying. This is exactly what I've been talking about as a black American in the UK with the videos that you've seen me do. If you know who I am, you see my videos. These, they prove the point exactly what I've been saying. If you don't know who this is, this is Jameis Fahad. They're particularly a very good content creator itself, I would say. And I would love to do an interview with them in the future or anytime or even if asked to be on that platform because I feel like I could learn a lot from them. But I can also have this particular conversation into depth. This situation is, if you don't know what's going on, I'm gonna play a clip so you can understand exactly what happened. They basically allowed somebody to go into their face while using and associating their particular platform and disrespect black women. And I, I just watch the clip. Look, what is the black girlfriend effect? This is oh, you, you don't know you about just this. glow up the other culture. Yeah, so you'll see a, a, a guy who's had a black girlfriend, all of a sudden he's got a buzz cut, like, yeah. clean shape up. Nah, nah, yeah. 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 Again, I'm going to say I would love to, to sit down and have a conversation because I feel like I learned a lot for these guys. So please tag them in the comments. But this is one of the points that I've been saying a lot. Of, they're British. A lot of people, a lot of melanated people internationally don't really understand the game that's being played here in America. They don't realize how they're being used to affect and target black people internationally or melanated people internationally. They don't realize the people that we're in competition with or competing with on this particular stance itself. They think that the mentality of these other ethnicity people are simplistic or are basic to the way it was back then. They don't realize how like it's very much passive aggressive, how they are really doing stuff like on a strategical level, saying stuff and using you to do it at the same time. I, 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 they dropped the apology video. I don't know if you guys want to see me react to the apology video. I can literally break that down. But like I said, I really, I'm in London right now. I really would love to sit down and have a conversation with these guys. Not just about this. Like I said, they have a lot of information I would love to learn from them in general. But I think it'll be a good opportunity for black Americans and Brits to be able to sit down and have an intellectual conversation. Make it happen, chat. You let a white man talk about black women in your presence and you are shining your teeth. Fuhad and James, come to the front, please. Fuhad, especially you, Fuhad, come to the front. You guys sat in that white man's face and let him talk about black women unprovoked and you are just there shining your teeth. You are just shining your teeth. <laughs> you let a white man, let, let me do like Dr. Uma. You let a white man talk about black women in your presence and you are shining your teeth. Let me come again. You let a white man come in, into your presence and be dragging black women and you are just shining your 32. Just know that this platform that you built off of the backs of black women, they are going to take it from you. Straight up. First, it was that there are no bad bitches in Atlanta. First of all, we don't have bitches. We have black, beautiful black women in Atlanta. Hmm? First, you said that one. Everybody said, you know what? There's a preference. It's okay. We know you like white women. It's okay. Then you now went to go and start shining your teeth with that white man when he was talking about... And the jokes were not even funny, bro. The jokes were not even funny. Like, I wanted to laugh. I was waiting for the joke to land. 
and you are just shining your teeth today. And even if you felt uncomfortable and you felt like, oh, I can't really say too much. Da, 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 da. Uh -uh. Since he wants to be funny, be hilarious. Ask him, what do you mean by that joke? Explain it. Let's comfortable. You want to make me uncomfortable? Let's all be uncomfortable. This be a lesson to my ladies. The moment you find yourself liking a man on this app, don't. They are going to do some Blue. fuck shit against black women in three business days. So let this be a warning. If you see a man's content on this app, swipe. You'll be safe. Right, before we get into today's episode, mm -hmm. uh, quick PSA, quick acknowledgement. Mm -hmm. um, so, if you know, you know. If you don't, that's fine. Um, but we just wanted to address something that's happening at the minute. Yep. This past weekend, uh, there's been a couple of clips going around uh, from when we did a session on the Flagrant podcast um, while we were on our US tour. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, there were a few jokes made um, that were incredibly inappropriate. One, speci <laughs> bro, incredibly. one specifically pertaining to black women. Yep. Um, and in the clip, um, Andrew was making a joke. Uh, I'm not even going to get into specifics. Making a uh, like, frankly, like racist joke. Yeah. And we were laughing at it. Mm -hmm. And to give, there's, there's. First of all, before we get into like specifics or anything like that, obviously, there's just literally no excuse. There is no excuse. Agreed. Um, and fight or flight is a real thing. Like it is, yeah, fight or flight is a real thing. And it's so not easy to say, but when you're in those situations, you you look at it through a lens of like, bro, if it was me, I promise you I'll stand up, I'll kick them cameras down. Yeah. I'll smack homeboy in the face. Yeah. I'll say this, I'll do that. But when you're in there, you're in shock. You're in shock and all you want to do is move on. Yeah, yeah. All, all, bro, move on is the fucking do, word, bro. All like, you want to do is fucking move on. Just move on to the next thing. Yeah. Just move on to the next thing. There's and so like many we had times. to say a few times, bro, just move on. Just move just on. Move on. so many different topics. You were like, move on, move on, move on. And yeah. It's not even like about pity laughs or anything, but we just wanted to get, get out of that get situation. Of, get, literally get out of that situation, keep the ball rolling. And we thought it was going to be more of like a, a bro's Chat, yeah, it, just, it, it ended yeah, up being something that ended up being be. something that's like really, really hurt people that yeah. look to us for support and look mm. to us to feel protected. And protected is the main thing yeah. that I wanted to discuss is that it is our duty to protect you guys. Facts. Um, and it is definitely not cool to be in that situation. And again, not be the ones to stand up and kick the cameras down. And we fucked it. On that occasion, we did. it's not going to happen again. And it's about being human. It's about mm. realizing that you don't know what you're prepared for. You don't know how to prepare for something, something you don't know that you about. don't know yeah. what's going to happen. Yeah. And once it's happened one time, you're like, fuck, all right. You learn from your mistakes um, and that's literally, that's you, literally, you literally learn from your mistakes, Yeah, we man. fucked it and we're like, we're sorry. We, and we, definitely, we definitely do apologize. It's for me, like, it's one of them ones where you, you don't realize that like, for one, when you're part of a community, you don't realize that you can hurt your own community. Mm, especially when, so when, bad. when you're not, yeah, when, yeah. when unintentionally. Unintentionally for real, And yeah. also on, on top of that, it was so crazy that like the narrative that's been spun about how we feel about our community, mm. the irony of the fact that whilst the whole reason we're in that country was to just show how much we love we, our community yeah. and show how much we love our supporters and yeah. how much time we spent at the shows and just like getting to know people mm -hmm. and just like understanding our community better and just like making friends and making bonds and showing yeah. love and they're showing love. And this whole six week trip was just about showing how much we love our community yeah, and how much our community show them. up, yeah. show out for us. And then <sighs> to have that exact same trip be the reason that we're having to, to have this conversation now. Um, but at the end of the day, um, Mistakes make you a better person. Mistakes do make you're you not a better born person. A per you're not born yeah. a perfect person. Um, and yeah, we don't condone, we don't appease that behavior. Mm. We don't rate it. Um, and we don't want you guys to think that we were sat in that room rating what's going on. We hold our hands up, we apologize. Um, you learn from your mistakes and we hope we don't let our community down again because ultimately we we do this for you guys. Like, Yeah, you guys day. are all you we guys, have, man. You guys are literally all we have. You guys have taken us to this, to this level and we don't want to let you guys down going forward and anymore so you know it's apologies um we're gonna break this particular thing down i'm not gonna go too deep into it i'm just gonna give my opinion like i said i'm in london right now i would love to sit up and try to meet with these guys have a conversation because i think these guys are very informative but we're i'm gonna break as much down as i can let's get into the video please don't forget to like and tag them in the comments down below let's get it mm, yeah there were a few jokes made um that were incredibly inappropriate 
one specific, bro, incredibly. one specifically pertaining to black women. Yeah. Um, and in the clip, um, Andrew was making a joke. Uh, I'm not even going to get into specifics. Making a uh, like, frankly, like racist joke. Yeah. And we were laughing at it. Mm -hmm. And to give, there's, there's. First of all, before we get into like specifics or anything like that, obviously, there's just literally no excuse. There is no excuse. Agreed. Um, and fight or flight is a real thing. Like, it is, yeah. Fight or flight is a real thing, and it's so, not easy to say, but it, when you're in those situations, you you look at it through a lens of, like, bro, if it was me, I promise you I'll stand up, I'll kick them cameras down, yeah. I'll smack homeboy in the face, yeah. I'll say this, I'll do that. Okay, so if you see me go one and two, if you watch, watch this video again, you'll see the playback, there's, like, cuts. Now, I do cuts as well, but there's cuts. He said something in that particular moment that the editor cut out, and he zoomed in to make it seem like it was actually seamless. So if you really pay attention to that part from an editing perspective, he said something that they cut out at that particular moment, and it caught in the right time. So if you don't notice it, you won't notice it. I'm curious to what he cut out in those particular times, what I said too. Three, um, we have to give them the benefit of the doubt. And two, and, I'm gonna, and I have to be unbiologetically biased, unbiased when it comes down to this. And when you do these interviews and you interact with people, you don't have the perfect response to every single question. You do not have the perfect response to every single situation out of the whole thing. What you can do, which more importantly is the way you respond after the situation happens, you know? And from my perspective, when I'm sitting down and I'm looking at this and I'm just like, I'm like, bro, you're not really making eye contact with the video. Like, you're, you're very confident. I love these guys. I'm going to keep it real with you. I do. Like, I'm going to be honest. I love the way these guys talk. I love their content. But anything before this, I'm not going to discredit what type of creators these guys are. They are some of the best creators that I've seen so far. And I love their content. I'm going to be honest. I am a fan. Um, but unbiasedly, you're not making contact. You're not, you know, you're, you're the partner of the city. Like, you're literally like, yeah, yeah. Like you're trying to make it in a way where you're not burning bridges because you still want to be accepted to the other side of the aisle. It doesn't make sense, my guy. I'm going to be honest with you. Like you represent melanated people on an international level. Or matter of fact, you represent the UK if that's what fits, what, what fits for you. You have to have a stance. Like your people are relying on you to be the voice. Like you are the people. Like you are, you're the community. You're the melanated community. You're one of the representations that people from an international level, whether it's UK or America, looked at you guys and said, yo, I like these guys and I'm going to support these guys and watch these guys. You have to make a stance, my guy. You can't be all bush and wood, uh, yeah, uh, uh, no offense, I get it. You don't know how to respond to these situations. You never know what's going to come out of your mouth. I get it. I completely understand. It, it, for the people that are watching, it is very difficult to say the right thing all the time. So you can see him literally trying to figure out the right way to articulate his message without being disrespectful. I get it. You have to be diplomatic from both sides of the field, 100%. You don't know what you're going to do. Everybody has an opinion saying, oh, I'm, I'm going to. No, you don't know what you do. They've never been in the ant. They've never been in that type of environment where the person that they're against or going or sitting across is highly more strategical when it comes down to this race game. This is what I've been saying the whole time. They probably, you probably, we say, no, they know. They're not competing with people like this on a consistent daily basis. We are. And because they don't understand these conversations, you can look at my videos all the time and read the comments. They don't understand the game that we're, we're playing at the highest level. We have the most diabolical people competing against us in this particular field. We are really competing with the most strategical people in the world who are strategically trying to let me calm down. You know what I mean? They're not prepared. They're culturally unprepared to be able to sit in America and be a vocal point for melanated people. I'm sorry. I love these guys to death. But you guys need to be prepared to understand what's going on for you guys to jump into a situation and allow people to use your melanatedness to destroy or bring down a whole group of people. You're being used as pawns. You got to understand the game respectfully. And like I said, I would love to do an interview with these guys or meet up with these guys. Tag them in the chat. I, I'm friendly, bro. I'm friendly. We can do shits and giggles too. <laughs> I'm just keeping it real, you know? Like I said, bro to bro, you know? So, family, I own the Shits and Gigs podcast, Fuad and James. Do you think these young men can learn? I think Andrew Schultz knew, understood the, the, the dynamic of them being non-FBA from Britain. And he pressed certain buttons because they don't necessarily have a deep-rooted background 
and anti-black racism like we do. And shout out to our brother Adonis Live. Make sure you go follow him. He does have a YouTube channel. You can see him getting on those Brits next. Uh, respectfully. And it's a great conversation. He doesn't down talk nobody. I think only one dude tried to press him, tried to talk crazy to him. He had to kind of check him. You know, he had to let him know, you know, I'm American and we can get buck. We can get active. However, he's been very respectful in his, his videos. I watch his content. Go show him some love. I think they can learn. What do you think? Because we know Andrew Schultz is, if he's not a white supremacist, he's a white supremacist suspect. Or at the very least, white supremacist adjacent. All right. Two, I'm also working on merch, T-shirts with a lot of our sayings. Like, I'm a PA nigga and things of that nature. I'm waiting for samples to come in so I can make sure the shirts are good, good quality, and the price matches the quality of the shirt. I'm not here to gouge the family. I'm not here to get rich. I'm just here to kind of offset the cost of doing this because I do have my own personal vehicles and things in life, children of that nature. And um, to be able to do this and keep you guys informed, I have to find a way to offset that cost. And also make sure you guys have something that you can proud of that you can wear along with myself. So stay tuned. Also, we're still working on the giveaway for these shoes. I have that posted up. You'll also be able to find details on my website, which is currently under construction. So give me about a week from the time you see this video. And we should have everything good to go so we can present it to the family properly. Be one. Now let's get to Tariq's Live. The Hidden History Museum tomorrow evening. That's Saturday, September 14th. We got a great event. So y'all need to come on down. Go to hiddenhistorymuseum.com. Hiddenhistorymuseum.com. Come on down and join me. We're going to have a great time tomorrow night. We're going to get calls in a minute, but let's get right to the nitty gritty. There is a situation going on in Henderson, North Carolina. In Henderson, North Carolina, there was an alleged lynching of a young black man. I think he was a truck driver. His name was Javion McGee. A brother named Javion McGee was found lynched with a rope. And there's some funny business going on. I've seen some videos of law enforcement there surrounding the area. They put out the typical statement of it's a suicide. This is what I'm hearing. The mother, for a minute, they wouldn't let her, from what I'm understanding, they wouldn't let the mother see the body. Um, it's a lot of funny business going on with this situation out there. Law enforcement said that he went and bought a rope and then hung himself. It, it's, it's sounding weird and funny style. They always say that when we see these lynchings of black men, these modern lynchings of black men in trees, they say that they went and got a rope and publicly hung themselves, which makes no sense. And this was in Henderson, North Carolina. Some people are saying it was a sundown town. What Henderson, from what I understand, is a predominantly black town. Um, all of these towns got histories of racism, so that's nothing new. But it just sounds real funny. Sounds like some funny business is going on in Here's the thing with situations like this, where are the Democrats on it? Because they got that anti-lynching bill that they would like to brag about. They like to brag about some anti-lynching bill. We get lynched all the time. What happens is they go to local law enforcement. All local law enforcement does is say, oh, it was a suicide. No matter how ridiculous that claim is, they just falsely claim it was a suicide. Well, this Negro, he hopped up on that high tree and holstered himself up on this big old tree and hung himself. Yeah, you think he tied his arms around his back and hung himself. They love doing that. It, it makes zero sense. So this is sounding, sounding like a cover-up out there. And the Democrats, what are they doing? You see, because when this stuff happens, they love to holler about, we're going to get more of this with Trump. When Trump comes, it's going to be some more of this. Damn it, what's being done about it now? Biden and Kamala, you guys are in office now. The Democrats, all the Democrat shills are running up in our spaces, whining, talking about their anti-lynching bill and 
oh, it's going to be hell when Trump comes in office. It's hell now. So what's being done now? I don't want to hear all of that. The boogeyman Trump, when he when Trump come, it's just going to be crazy. It's crazy now. Nobody's doing anything now. They like kicking the football down the road and then wait until some Republicans get in office and say, oh, look, they ain't doing nothing. No. Dust off that lynching bill y'all been bragging about. That ain't worth a damn. They ain't never prosecuted nobody for it. Not prosecuting nobody for that. And a lot of the hate crime bills, we don't, they don't use them to to do anything to protect us. The hate crime bills, they flip those things for the LGBT. I think there was some dude up in Minnesota. They, um, I think they hit him with a hate crime charge. Uh, he shot a transgender person. But the thing is, he shot the person while they were in the middle of having sex. And he, he said he got suspicious. He realized it was a dude and then flipped out and shot the person. Yeah. So those hate crimes and those laws are now being used for non-FBA people. They're going to be using them for immigrants soon. We've got to watch out for that. That's another thing we got to watch out for. Watch out for the little dog whistle language. What the immigrants are doing now, because the white supremacists are getting on their bumper about, you know, the, the Haitians and the, the missing pets and the cats. Um, a lot of the Haitians and other immigrants, they, I'm seeing a lot of videos. I talked about this yesterday. They're doing a lot of videos like low-key threatening us and really pointing the finger at Foundation of Black Americans. There were some, some tethers and Democratic shields in a space earlier people were telling me about. Um, they had my name all in the mix, blaming me and blaming Foundation of Black Americans for white people going in on them for eating cats and pets and ducks and swans. They're criticizing us for, uh, we, we made white people turn on them. That's their narrative. Like what? Their narrative now is that we got the white people to turn on them. And they're calling them out for eating all of these pets and birds and stuff. And they're mad at us. We didn't start that. The people of Springfield, the people over there started saying that. We didn't have anything to do with that. Y'all stop blaming us and hold your own nuts. Now cut that out. Stop blaming us. Because what they're trying to do, they're trying to dog whistle. Yeah, we need a crime bill to protect us from them mean FBAs, black Americans. We need a crime bill. That's, see, that's where they're trying to go with it. They're trying to go with that. And also in these spaces, they're up here trying to they keep trying to drag us in the mix. It's the white people that's going in on them, but they keep talking about us. They're like, those FBA niggas, they talk about us eating cats and dogs, but them niggas eat chitlins and pig's feet. That is much worse. These niggas they eat hog marks and pork chops. Uh, that ain't the same as cat chops, all right? Pork chops is not the same as goose chitlins. Well, uh -huh. they're trying to play that game now. And also, I'm seeing a lot of them, they're just really denigrating us. We're not the ones really, we're not throwing you under the bus. We're not doing, other people are clowning you. But you're so afraid to tackle these other people. You, you, you got all the smoke and vitriol for us because, again, we're not really putting on the cape for you. So because we're not putting on the cape, they're trying to, infuse themselves with our history what you fba niggas don't know the haitian revolution sent shockwaves to start revolution here in the america and no 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 y'all y'all not gonna rewrite history now y'all not about to rewrite history y'all not gonna say that we had revolutions going on over here we had rebellions going on over here way before and even after the Haitian Revolution, we had brothers set up the Great Dismal Swamp, which was a sanctuary area that was never infiltrated. See, nobody can say that, that they had a sanctuary area under the system of global white supremacy that was never infiltrated. The Great Dismal Swamp of Virginia, North Carolina, that was a place that foundational Black Americans secured for themselves, for runaways and other people for their safety. 
and they meticulously guarded this place and it was never infiltrated. When people talk about part of the Underground Railroad, that was a major part of the Underground Railroad. The Great Dismal Swamp was a major part of a communications network because they can relay messages from the North and the South without being intercepted because white people didn't have access to that swamp area. They didn't have access to the maroon colony set up there. And they're still studying that to this day. That's how Harriet Tubman was able to go back and forth from the North and the South. She was dealing with the brothers and sisters in the, the dismal swamp. So yeah, we, we already had our revolutions going. We already had stuff going, so I don't want people, and, and again, I respect the history of Haiti. I did a movie about the history of Haiti and the revolution. I got much love for Dessaline and Toussaint and all of those guys, but we're not gonna let people rewrite history and try to make it seem like they put the battery in our backs. Um, no, 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 no. We're not going to let nobody rewrite history. Um, they're trying to rewrite the history of New Orleans. Oh, then most of those niggas are Haitian in New Orleans. Fat Domino was new. He was Haitian. Uh, we're not doing that either. No, no. Um, we're not doing that either. Just because somebody has a French Creole accent, that doesn't make them Haitian. You know, we're not playing that game. Uh, let me get my brother, um, Dr. Randy Short in the building. My good brother, Dr. Randy Short. Dr. Short, what's up, brother? Oh, keep telling the truth. Yes, our sir. stuff is our stuff. And uh, we got to fight, man. And we've been fighting. And mm -hmm. we're fighting prior to the Haitian Revolution, if people are familiar with the Negro Wars that started in the 1700s. Even, uh, let me see, started with the War of Jenkins' Ear. This mm -hmm. stuff is even almost six. Mm -hmm. well, Dr. Short, where you at? Every time Dr. Short is about to start cooking, that phone goes out. Man, every time my brother's about to start cooking, that phone goes out. I want my brother to pop back on. Hop back on, Dr. Short, because I know you're about to start cooking. Uh, let's, let me get you back on in a minute. i get you back on in a minute. Um, let me see. We got a lot of people in here. Hold on. Mildred, hop on. You Hop on, Mildred. You wouldn't talk about nothing. How come oh. every time you talk to a white man, you say, Daddy? You real moist. Okay, that's you sound like you're projecting and you ain't never heard me say no daddy. You call everybody else more you more Okay, you sound like a big back <laughs> non-binary nigga. Good lord, you sound big back. Well them you need to take a couple of more hormone pills. It's still you got some testosterone left, sir. Good lord. You sound like you smell like hog mog, just big back for nothing. What's okay, Mildred? Let's talk about on? your damn shape. And we can pull the tapes back all the times you said it. Yeah, it's on tape. Yeah, well, you know, what's uh, what else is taped is your nuts taped back. All right? That's also taped. Let's take the tape off of that, sir. Lord, you're very aggressive. You need more of those estrogen pills, sir. What, what's going on, Mildred? Come on now. You bit over with plumber's crack. That time mm -hmm. you could find a Thomas Sotomayor. You bit over with plumber's crack when your ass was flat. Um, Miss um, Nigger. Yo, yo, bussy whistles when you walk. Okay, is that wide? You walking around with a wide bussy for nothing. When you walk, it sounds like the ending of sitting by the dock of the bay. And Peanut went trying to get you no damn snack. Yeah, with the what? Peanut what? Peanut Don't went he... trying to get you no damn snack when you were sick with your. Right, right, and nobody was getting you a snack when you were getting gender reassignment surgery. And you got the wrong surgery. You got it wrongly reassigned. You got an extra bussy put in so you can get double penetrated by niggas. All right. So you got a lot going on. You want on, white so. men to call you. I, I, what, 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 Miss Nigga? What? Uh, we, we got T.S. Giselle in here. Now I'm being double teamed. You want white men to call you daddy. <laughs> well, you're a daddy. You're probably looking like Carl Winslow over there. You look like the daddy from Family Matters. All right. Without that wig, uh, you look like a daddy, okay? Come on, Pops, talk about it. <laughs> I know your big bill ass, bad shape ass ain't talk about nobody's shape. 
With your you you shape like a memory foam pillow with kitten heels, so you can't say nothing about a shape, sir. All right, your shape is horrible. Anyway, let me get you up out of here so you can go ahead and get your hormone shots. Okay. All right, let me get some more people in here. T.S. Giselle, that's one of your people? <laughs> is that one of your people, T.S. Giselle? Okay. Yeah, that testosterone was really on strong. Okay, let me get some more people in here. All right, let's get, um. shout out to everybody in here. We got a lot of folks in here, almost 800 in the first two minutes. That's a great thing. Let's get Jason Voorhees in here, the Jason Voorhees person. What's going on, Jason Voorhees? If you would like to speak, go ahead, sir. Go ahead, man. Jason? Well, what are you whispering? Are you you whispering death with whispers? What are you whispering, sir? Okay, are you at T.S. Giselle's house and T.S. Giselle has you tied up? Do you need some help? I can send an Uber over there. Right. Okay, T.S. Giselle, I think there's a victim at your house. Yeah. Uh, we need to get him some help. Tiz, can you please untie the man? You and um, Mildred, y'all tied the man up and you're doing things to him. Okay. Uh, let me get some more people in here. Um, let's get Elisa. Let's get Elisa in here. Elisa, what's up, Elisa? If I'm pronouncing your name right. Elisa, you want to get on? All right, Elisa, one more time. Let's try one more time and then. Yes, I'm I'm here. I just, I just, as a matter of fact, I just tuned in. I listened to you a lot lately and um, I had to unfollow you because I was just of the negativity and I I wish you act more like, um, anyway, um, I right. just wanted to ask you. Um, okay, but why are you following? If you've unfollowed me, how come you didn't continue to unfollow me? You know, I, I, I've been listening to you for years, and I really, really do enjoy, you know, your videos and your podcasts and stuff. But just some of the name calling, and it just kind of throws me off a little bit. So I, I wish I, I shouldn't have said that. I apologize. Right, but. right. Because you don't have to listen to me, ma'am. I, 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 I tell people, I'm, I prefer that you don't. And if anybody you don't? Has to be, yeah, I, yes, I, I do not need a big crowd. For some reason, I'm extremely popular. I do. I'm a very popular person, and I, I never. Know that. Really Right. I never really asked for it. I do. That's one of the, you know what? Part of my popularity is that I don't care about popularity. I just say whatever and just say the truth. And for some reason that makes me more popular, but okay, go ahead. Okay. What, no, what, what, I, I issue, what issue, that. Yeah, but what issue, do you, what issue do you have, ma'am? I just wanted to get your opinion. I just pulled up on X here and, um, it, I don't, I don't know how new this is, but that goofy lady, uh, uh, Laura Loomer, she's going off because Kamala said that she was going to approve the reparations. And I just wanted to get your opinions on that because she's she's really going off about that. And, and other white people are chiming in on that because I just no, wanted wait, to get no, your no, opinion no, on that. Hold on, slow down now. Laura, Laura Loomer said that Kamala is going to uh, approve reparations. Yes, if you look at her web page, it's about 30 minutes ago. She's got a video of Kamala standing next to Al Sharpton and she's called him a race baiter and she says that Kamala told Al Sharpton that she's going to approve the reparations if she becomes president and Laura Loomer is like going off yeah that's all that's political theater um, Laura Loomer they know that Kamala Harris is not going to approve reparations they know that if that were the case um, Kamala Harris would have done it already that's an old video that video is from years ago um, Kamala Harris and Biden, they're in office now. They are not approving reparations. And in fact, the Democrats crashed the reparations bill out here in California. They are not going to approve reparations. But Laura Loomer, basically, she is put out there to cater to the white supremacist crowd. She's um, she's put out there to be their white supremacist outreach. She says a bunch of outrageous stuff to pander to the white supremacist crowd of the right. Which, you know, that's a dumb strategy from from them, which they don't need to do. They already have the white supremacist right. So doing all that weird pandering to the racist base, you know, they want to do that. And, and 
fumble the bag, that's on them. But yeah, ain't nobody, none of these people are proving any reparations. They're not. Um, Kamala Harris is, has already said what she's not going to do for black people. And we believe her. All right, let's get, um, let's get Nathaniel in here. Nathaniel, you're giving a lot of thumbs down. And by the way, Nathaniel's a, is like a Somalian who pretends to be a white supremacist just for context. So he's not really a white man. He's really a, a musty tether. But go ahead, Nathaniel. What's going on? Nathaniel, what's happening? Nathaniel, what's going on? Okay, Nathaniel, you're not saying anything. So we're going to have um, go ahead and get you up out of here since you're not saying anything. Probably bathing his camel right now. Okay. Oh, let me try. How I get you up out of here? Uh, okay, well, let me try it. Let me try something. Nathaniel, you want to try it again, Nathaniel? Nathaniel? Okay. Okay, I don't know why something is going on here. Let's get Robbie in here. Let's get Brother Robbie in the building. Robbie, what's going on? I finally got my Obama phone upgraded. I just yeah. wanted to say, brother, that um, keep doing the work, man. Your comedy is right on time because we're dealing with some tense times and you know how to break the ice and to keep everybody on code. Yeah. I don't know why the Haitians are pretending like they didn't delineate first and all these people thought, uh, you know what it was? They thought the feminist sugar daddy, oh, by, you know, Biden was going to give them a bunch of goodies. And now Kamala is scrambling to try to create, you know, an image. They're doing this image overhaul and it just looks terrible. This Operation Black Shield. And that ties into the lynching. We're being targeted. We're getting maybe like the Obama backlash early. Do you believe that's the case? Absolutely. I absolutely. That's believe what that. I feel. And yeah. I land my plane there. The Obama backlash 2.0. Yes, indeed. And this is what I'm telling people. Fam. I said this before. When Obama was in office, because they couldn't get to Obama, and Dr. Welsing talked about this, she talked about the rise of um, Black people being attacked under Obama. And because he's protected, they can't get to them. There's a backlash of having a, um, a cosmetically Black person, and I say that with quotes because he's not a foundational Black American, but to have a Black man and a so-called Black family, he does have a Black wife in the White House for the white supremacists, you know, that's too much visually. So if they can't get to him, they'll get to people who are more vulnerable, which are innocent black people. So the white supremacists have always targeted random black people when certain policies didn't go their way. In the 1900s, early 1900s, around 1919, there was a big massive wave of lynchings around the country because of World War II. They couldn't bring in a lot of immigrants from Europe because the U.S. was fighting against some of the European powers. So a lot of these factories, they needed black workers. That's why there was a big migration. One of the great, the first wave of the migrations were going, black people going up there to the north, getting a lot of those good jobs at those factories. And there was a massive backlash from the white supremacists where black people were getting decent jobs and they were able to take care of themselves on, an, on a somewhat equal footing. So because they couldn't attack the policies themselves because of the circumstances, the white supremacists would just lynch random black people. And we're going to see that times 10 if Kamala gets in office. See, y'all better understand how dangerous it is to have somebody like that who's not going to give us any protection, somebody who's going to keep up the benign neglect policy against us. That's very dangerous because with they, if they can't get to Kamala, which they won't because she's protected, they're going to take that stuff out on us and she's not going to give us any federal protection. You dig? This woman has already said what she ain't going to do for us. And again, the only people who's really caping for Kamala are Democratic Shields, Tethers, moist cats, and that's pretty much it. I put up an article earlier where they're talking about how in certain states, especially certain swing states, Trump is winning, especially with black voters. This the I think the New York Post 
put out this story saying that Trump is actually getting a lot of support in some of the preliminary polls. Some of the support he's getting from black people has him ahead of Kamala in many of these crucial states. You dig? Oh, we got T.S. Giselle putting the thumbs down. Uh Uh-oh. Let's get T.S. T.S. Giselle don't like that because if Trump gets in office, what what does that mean? Less bussy. Go ahead, T.S. Giselle. Hop on. Um, Yeah, so I just have a couple of things to address. First off, we've got to stop with the lies about Trump making inroads with black voters. Let me explain. Not a lie, but go ahead. It is a lie. And there's such an enthusiasm around the Kamala Harris campaign. Um, I just attended a rally. Um, Kamala was in North Carolina, which I'm going to address the topic of this room as well. Um, Kamala was in North Carolina and there was tens of thousands of people at both rallies. Um, a large, a large presence of black voters. But what I was amazed was the diversity. Hold on. I was amazed at the diverse audience that we saw. There was white, black, Asian, Hispanic, gay, straight, trans. It was beautiful to see that unity and that positivity and enthusiasm. Um, She's got great um, leverage post the debate. Trump is obviously running scared after she dominated and devastated him in the debate. He doesn't want to debate her again because he... Oh, no, no, let's be real. She didn't dominate him. The moderators were pretty much dominating. Kamala didn't dominate anything. The moderators had to run interference for her. But go ahead, go ahead. Her name is not Kamala. Hmm? Kamala, Tamala, tomato, tomato. Go ahead. Go you and those knock ass knees intentionally mispronouncing her name. Anyway, okay. let me not get distracted. Okay. Um, yeah, so there's a lot of enthusiasm for her campaign. Um, but as Kamala said yesterday in her speech, um, that we're running like we're behind, like we're losing. And so, you know, that's what we're going to do. I'm going to do some work. I'm going to hit the pavement tomorrow. And I'm also going to do some phone banking for the North Carolina for Harris campaign. Um, North Carolina is in play. Let me be very clear. If Kamala wins North Carolina, there's no path to victory for Trump. And so I'm going to do everything that I can in my ability to elect Madam Vice President Kamala Harris um, as the 47th president of the United States. My fellow HBCU graduate and a wonderful sister of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated. Um, Really quick on this topic. You guys are going to like when I have to say this, but I live in North Carolina, so you guys don't know North Carolina. So I'm seeing headlines and I have not read articles on this person that was found deceased. God rest his soul. Um, But I'm seeing comments about this truck driver from Chicago and this redneck Hickville town in North Carolina. Henderson is not a redneck hick town. It is majority black town in eastern North Carolina. So it's important that facts, um, that we discuss facts. But I, of course, I know with your audience, facts doesn't matter. Um, oh, no. Or intellect, um, but guys, I think that we've seen these. Slow down, slow down. I stated earlier that it was a majority black town, so I've already said that. But go ahead. Um, I wasn't. Yeah, but you were you were babbling, so I had to just correct that. Okay, but go ahead. And you talk about facts. How we, you know, since I am a career woman, and the majority of your audience is obviously unemployed, since they can stay up at four a.m. on the East Coast. Well, slinging bussy in Dubai ain't really a career. But go ahead, go ahead. Oh, God, I love. Oh, I think one of his balls hit the phone and it hit it mute. Okay, all right, T.S. Um, you you hit the phone with something. I don't want to know what hit the phone. All right, but yeah. Um, Kamala Harris doesn't really have that grassroots support. Y'all not fooling nobody. When you talk to people on the streets, you saw Don Lemon going around talking to people on the streets and a lot of black people up here talking about they're going to support Trump. When you talk to people on the grassroots, people are not really rocking with Kamala Harris like that. The only people who you see caping for Kamala or Democratic shields online, trolling for them. They work for some kind of think tank and they got multiple accounts. Uh, somebody who's trying to get some Bucci cat or um, some tether. That's the only people you see caping. 
People ain't really caping for Kamala Harris like that. Let's be real. Or elderly people, elderly black people. I'm talking about black folks. All right. Nobody's really caping for Kamala like that. People know that Kamala can't stand us. Now, what's going yeah, on? Yeah, you still making that whack ass music? Um, yeah, just like you're making those whack ass hormone shots. Yeah, you still making that whack ass music? There? It's not working for you, sir. Listen to you. Then you need to get some better shots, sir. Them shots are not working. And what about your music? You start mute when you can't fucking take. That's the fucking. Hey, no, you're not going to use profanity, Mr. Miss Thang. You're not going to do that. You're just not going to just have a filthy mouth. You're not on the boy hole stroll right now. All right. Calm down. You're not going to use profanity, sir. All right. <sighs> anyway, sir. What else do you have to say? Don't use profanity. We have young people in here. I know. Um, I just wanted to say Michi S is gonna beat up. Okay, uh, Miss Nigga, go take your hormone pills. Okay, because you're just babbling. Okay, you're just babbling. What's all these these non-binary, um, buck broken cats calling in today? What's going on? It is. I think they're very nervous. A lot of the non-binary dudes. Who are buck broken? They're very nervous right now. A lot of y'all are calling up because y'all y'all see that Kamala Harris ain't really getting the support she's supposed to get. So you guys are very upset with that. Don't be upset with me because I know that they they have those think tanks who kind of do analytics and they see a lot of influence I have. So they a lot of these people blame me for some of these politicians not getting the support they need. So they're very mad. So this person seems like um you know, a lack. I'm yeah, you, you sound very upset, sir. Why, why are you so upset? Go ahead, sir. You you keep muting me, so I don't know if I can talk or not. Like, that's the problem. And I don't take no hormones. I don't need hormones. I look better than peanut. Okay, you have peanuts in your drawers. So, sir, it's not a comparison. And I don't want you. I don't want a replacement. So, sir, let me let you go. This is getting very uncomfortable now, sir. So you take you and that dripping bussy on somewhere. We don't want it here. You guys are kind of upset because you think if Trump gets in office, that's going to be less bussy for you. There's still plenty Bucci cat to go around. Andrew Gillum is still there. You know, you, you can, y'all can make things happen. You can form your little networks and <laughs> just don't bring that stuff to the schools and all of that. That's, that's our concern. Don't bring it around children. Y'all get y'all a little fraternity somewhere, a fraternity slash sorority, UTS Giselle, yeah, um, nigga Ficada, whatever, whatever y'all want to call yourself, Kappa Alpha Dude, whatever you want to make, just knock yourself out. All right. Let's get some more people in here. We got a lot of folks in here, by the way, family, the movie Microphone Check, number one documentary on Amazon. I thank everybody for putting that movie back at the number one spot, the number one movie on Amazon, Microphone Check. Well, this is probably my, what, ninth or 10th number one movie. This is probably my ninth or 10th. I, I don't put out so many number one movies. I've lost count. So shout out to everybody as far as that. Also, the album called Grinding for a Green Card is available now on all streaming platforms, Grinding for a Green Card. Um, there's a song, T.S. Giselle might like this one. It's a song called Crooked Wig. That's one of my favorites on the, the album. So you guys can check that out. Let me get some more people in here. A lot of people in this lovely room on this lovely day. Um, let's get um, T. Gray. He's one of the, I guess he's over there in Somalia. T. Gray. Either Somalia, Ethiopia, somewhere. T. Gray, what's up, brother? T. Gray? Hello. Oh, it's the lady. How's doing, ma'am? <laughs> How are you? I'm good. What's going on with you, beloved? Um, I mean, I um, obviously can read it from my profile. I'm um, from Tigray, uh, northern region of Ethiopia. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I see uh, this kind of divisive politics uh, in the U.S., it just concerns me because of what we are going through with this uh, 
geopolitical adventurers and their mercenaries uh, destabilizing uh, the entire continent mm -hmm. um, and committing genocides in the um, African Americans uh, in the U.S., the original American, the Edos, we call them whatever. Um, but Found I foundational. Huh? You mean foundational black? Foundational, yes, because I have always, you know, I'm very grateful for the foundational African Americans, the original Americans, African. I would rather call them instead of African American because we are called African Americans. But the Americans, Africans, they have um, they have given us opportunity not just only for the Africans migrants, but for the entire world immigrants to the U.S. So I'm very grateful for that. Uh, but also we need advocacy for justice uh, because this monster of genocide that regime in Ethiopia is still slaughtering. And uh, the U.S. is supporting this regime because they don't want balkanization at the blood of the Tigray peoples. Um, you know, and we need the uh, Americans, uh, African Americans, Black the Foundational, who gave the freedom, who gave the voice, who gave the civil rights to people such as myself and other people who opened the door for us to get this uh, freedom. Thank you so much, ma'am. I appreciate you. Nikki, Nikki the God, hop on. Hi. Um, I wanted to talk about how the Democrats are responding to the lynching in North Carolina. Um, unfortunately, Black men being found hung from trees and having the police gaslight the families by telling them that their loved ones committed suicide is nothing new. Mm -hmm. the, the only thing that has changed is that these acts, they're not, which are obvious lynchings, they're not being done publicly and put on postcards like they were done in the past. Yeah. Um, there are studies on suicide that are based on gender and race. And when it comes to black men and suicide, I know this because I've studied this for years. Black men do not commit suicide by hanging themselves from trees. They don't. Right. And I've always said this. I was I will go as far to say it is highly unlikely that that's what happened in any of these cases. Um, there's also a personal history behind this, specifically with foundational black American men. That is very personal. This omits most of them from ever being able to take the act of suicide in this manner if they meaning that if they really wanted to hang themselves they would do it in their garage they wouldn't just hang themselves on a tree that black men don't do this um we all know that the families are being lied to so that's nothing new um the role that the democrats play in this is that they're going to use these lynchings on foundational black americans to provide more set asides for immigrants and the lgbt community which is another reason why i'm not voting for them Mm -hmm. Also, the resources are going to be swarmed with being used on these other people that black people will basically be a mere second thought. So I feel like we're going to have to keep pushing for that hate crime bill and hopefully we can get it more lineage based. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Thank you. Yeah, that whole thing. Yeah, we don't black men don't commit suicide by no public hangings. They always they always do that. Some black person ends up dead and they claim it's a damn suicide. They did that with a black woman years ago up in New York. Remember, there was a black judge, like an older sister. She was like, I want to say either late 60s or early 70s. It's a black judge. And they said that she committed suicide by jumping in the Hudson River or something like that. I said, man, the hell out of here. I know black women, especially the older black women. Older black women ain't about to jump in no damn river. Ain't no older black woman. Older black women just don't commit no suicide, first of all. Especially older black career women who done fought all their career to rise through the ranks. The last thing they're going to do is go commit suicide. Black women, older black women don't do that. They just don't do that. And also, just the way they do it. Older black, if you're going to do a suicide, no matter what, older black women do not like to be uncomfortable. They don't like their clothes wet. So she ain't, ain't about to jump in no damn water. They ain't about to do that. And also, when they found the sister's body, they got real quiet about it. They said um, they did an autopsy. There was no water in her lungs. And then they never said anything else about that case. When they found her, there was no water in her lungs. And that means that she was already dead when she was in the water. When she got in the water, that means she was already dead. If you drown, you have water in your lungs. You think? So they got real quiet about that case. 
after the autopsy came out. So they've always done this, done little weird stuff, and then law enforcement will have a hand in it somehow. And the federal government, they get on code with local. They don't really override them. They all work together to be on code for the cover-up. All right. Let's get, um. I remember Mimi. Ain't Mimi that crazy chick? Ain't Mimi the crazy-ass chick? Hold on. What's up, Mimi? Mimi is the person who's kind of out there. Mimi? Yo, Mimi, turn your microphone on. I'm here. What's going on, Mimi? I'm in my feelings. Why are you in your feelings, Mimi? Because you sitting up here acting like you're not a debarge. Now, why am I a debarge? Because I believe that Donna Ross was up there messing with Michael Jackson, and I believe the little one with the button nose, that's, yeah, blackish and all that. Uh, Miss Ross, I'm going to talk to her real soon. But then little brother that's in the middle, right before Donna Ross stopped messing with Clive Davis, here's the little button in the nose. Remember the whiz? Hold on, Tyreek. I would love to talk to you. Tyreek, where is the whiz? And what let me listen. All you drug dealers out there, can you please stop stepping on the dope with all that fentanyl? Please stop cutting the dope with fentanyl like that. You're putting too much in it, and it's just messing up the dope. It's killing the customer's brain cells. Don't sell all of that stepped on ass dope, man. It's messing the game up. People are crazy as cat shit out of here, man. They take a hit of your work and then they start seeing Diana Ross and the Wiz and Michael Jackson and Gary Coleman. They don't know what they just out of whacked out of their minds, man. So you gotta do better as drug dealers. There's you know, you you can we're gonna have to call the human resource department at the trap house to complain about your drugs. It's, your drugs are horrible out here now. Good freaking grief, man. Y'all just don't have regular drug addicts no more. Drug addicts be seeing all types of shit. All right, let's get some more people in here. A lot of folks in here, guys. A lot of folks. Let's get resilient. Resilient in the building. And by the way, while I'm talking, y'all go to hiddenhistorymuseum.com and get your tickets to join me tomorrow night. Hiddenhistorymuseum.com. Resilient, what's up, brother? Hey, can you guys hear me all right? What's going on? Hey, I just wanted to mention, because uh, I just picked up my best friend from uh, Denver, Colorado. Uh, he had a fentanyl addiction. And we both have been heroin users off and on since we were uh, childhood. But, you know, just I don't want to take up a bunch of time, but I just wanted to say, mention the, it used to be about, you know, the drug dealers cutting their stuff with fentanyl, but now it's all fentanyl. Right. I mean, it's all fentanyl and the people are getting hooked on it and they don't want anything else. They don't, you know, you can buy five fentanyl pills for like five to ten dollars. Yeah. I mean, it's ridiculous. And, the, you know, so the problem is, well, among the many problems, you know, kids getting a hold of this stuff, you know, a, a, a little piece of powder can kill a kid. And, yeah. But that's that's what the drug that's what they want. That's the only thing that's getting these people high now. So. It's a double-edged sword for the for the for the dealer. Also, I don't. I just don't know what the. I mean, the solution is obviously to stay away from all of it. I just wanted to yeah. mention that. Yeah. Did you get? Have you gotten yourself off that nonsense? You got yeah, yourself. Yeah. It's off been. It's been five years for me and my 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 best friend. It was last year that me me and my brother went and picked him up. Um, he's on medication assistant treatment. It's a it's something called Suboxone, but he's been on it for a year. Okay. And it's been stable. And uh, yeah, it's been five and a half years for me. So. Okay. Uh, you, glory to God for that one. Stay on that path. Stay on that path. All right. Do not have a relapse. Yes, indeed. Um, shout out to everybody in here. We got a lot of folks in here. But yeah, man, the people are just, you know, real critical of us as foundational black Americans. They want us to put the cape on for them after they didn't sat up here and denigrated us. And now that everybody else is on the hot seat, they all look to us. And you know that every time people get on the hot seat, when when conflict is happening with other groups, the go-to vitriol is always us, even with Palestine and Israel. 
You got the people on the Israel side criticizing us because we're not getting involved. Remember Michael Rappaport going around making these threatening videos towards us? That yeah, you you black people, oh, we're we're watching you. We're watching your silence. We're gonna remember you being silent about this. I'm like we're like what the hell? The hell? The hell you? We ain't got nothing to do with this. Fight your battles. Then the Palestinians. Oh, come on now, y'all, y'all blacks, y'all, y'all blacks need to help us. We was down with Black Lives Matter. Y'all blacks, where the black people at? Anytime something happens, everybody wants to know where the FBAs. Now with the Haitians, people are clowning them for eating ducks and, and mice and guinea pigs and all types of stuff. They're like, oh, how come you niggas are not helping us? We're supposed to be brothers. How come you niggas are not helping us? No, no, we're not obligated to help anybody. We didn't help everybody enough. We're not everybody's personal security guards. We didn't stop that nonsense. Now everybody wants to talk that togetherness stuff. Oh, let's not be divisive. Let's, we're called divisive because we let you fight your own battles. Fight your own battles. We're not immigrants. None of we're not eating cats and and um, pit bulls. We, we're not doing that. Nobody's accusing us of doing that. If somebody's accusing you and you feel like it's done incorrectly, unjustly, you fight your battle. Fight your battles. But we're not obligated to jump in front of bullets for you. We done done enough. It's time for you to get in some good trouble. Okay, let's get Sepia in here. Sepia. What's going on, Sepia? Sepia. Unmute your microphone. Hey, shalom to you, Tariq. The, the only question I have to you, brother, and maybe you can answer it accurately. I heard that that um, lynching in North Carolina was somewhat politically connected, like not someone directly uh, tied to either candidate, but that was like a scare tactic to try to get us to fall in line. And I land there, brother. Yeah, I, we don't know. Yeah, we don't know. We don't know who's involved. We don't know. There's only speculation. We don't know if this thing is being covered up. We just don't know that. Nobody can tell. That's, you know, nobody can tell what the motivation was when we don't know the suspect. We don't know no, none of the details. So, you know, we don't know. Okay, let's get, um, uh, let me see. Let's get a lot of people in here. Let's get the Honorable Chris Dorner in the building. The Honorable Chris Dorner in the building. What's up, Chris? You turn your microphone on. Yes, sir. How, how you doing, brother? I'm good, man. How are you, sir? Doing pretty good. Uh, you, uh, last time I talked to you, you were like, oh, this brother Rambles. Talking about he, uh, talking about pit bulls or, you know, but, no. I, 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 you know, um, but no, uh, I, I just want to like raise like uh it's not just Ohio out here it's it's going out it's it's going on going on out here in a uh, uh San Diego where I'm at right now like there's a bunch of uh Haitians bro you don't see no like no stray animals anywhere anymore <laughs> at all I, I had a dude uh I, as as I was walking home from work um he 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 told me how to how to uh pick apart a, a skunk so that oh, he damn. can eat it for me. It, it's, it's, not, it's not just Ohio. Wow. This is, wow. This, this is going to right. Thank you. Thank you about that. Okay. But yeah, I, I, there was a room earlier with these, a whole bunch of Democratic shields and tethers were just really going in on us, just blaming us. They were talking about we were meeting with J.D. Vance and giving him talking points. They were just lying their asses off. Well, these tethers, well, they get to lying because they don't want to deal with the reality is that you got to defend yourself and people sit up here and wait on us to defend them. Whenever you get attacked, it's like, hey, hey, we all black together. We got to look out for each other. And then we do all the fighting and then we get all the bumps and bruises for protecting and defending these folks. And while we're all bloodied and bruised, they're sitting up here on the side talking about, man, y'all talk about racism too much, nigga. 
all white people ain't bad. You dig? They play that game. So we're letting them fight their own battles. That's something they do not want to do. None of these groups want to fight their own battles. None of these people are criticizing the white people that's going in on them. They're criticizing us. And we ain't done nothing to them. It's white people and the white media is going around showing images of these folks barbecuing cats and the white media is doing that. You dig? So don't have all that vitriol towards us. Stand up and fight for yourself. Stand up and defend yourself. Because, see, they don't want to be seen as radical. See, they like to let us be the radical ones while they sit up here and play. Well, no, I, I ain't like them now. You can you can hire me. I ain't mad like that one over there protesting. I ain't, I'm not angry like him. So you, you, you better go ahead and hire me. I'm not going to cause no trouble. You see? See, they want us to do the dirty work for them. And we ain't doing the dirty work. We ain't doing the hard work. We ain't getting our hands dirty with it. That's where the anger is coming from. This is why they keep trying to revise history. Man, if it, it was the black man from Haiti had found in Chicago. And by the way, with um, the brother who found in Chicago, he had a French name. But the evidence of him coming from actual Haiti, when it wasn't even Haiti at the time, it was Saint-Domingue. Even that's sketchy because you did have French colonies over here. St. Louis was a French colony. New Orleans, we know that. So the details of where he actually came from, that's that's kind of sketchy and up in the air. So let's get on um, BCM. BCM in the building. What's up, BCM? BCM. Where you at? All right, while we're waiting on BCM, let's get Jimmy D in the place. What up with it, Tariq? What's up, Jimmy D? How are you? Man, nothing. Call, can't call it. I'm in the office right now. Ain't nobody here, so I'm just I got on the space because I seen you got on one. Hey, but I want to talk about the topic that you're talking about now. You said something about, uh, I say about a couple months back, and, and it's actually coming to fruition. You said that uh, for tethers to kind of have a place, they actually for them to have a place within black society or to be a tether, they have to have some form of credibility amongst us, black Americans, foundational black Americans. Mm -hmm. And you're seeing that we're saying, man, we ain't rocking with them. You're seeing it with Myron. He getting kicked out of spaces. They calling him a nigger. You're seeing it with Sneeko. They turning on him because we done, we done pretty much dis disowned them. And now you're seeing it now with the other immigrant groups. So you said this months ago, and I'm just seeing it coming out. I'll let my plane now. Thank you so much, brother. Yeah, man, it's very important that um see these folks um who are non-fba the reason why they are useful to the white supremacists usually when they have some level of credibility when they can come among us and be critical as they're performing for white people they like to stand among us and say well yeah we need to get it together we black folks ain't worth nothing we black folks are so lazy we black folks need to stop begging we in and if they're allowed to stand there and claim to be a part of us that gives them a certain level of legitimacy with white people because that's who they're trying to impress they're trying to impress white people so the fact that they can get among us to lower the collective esteem by spewing all of these anti-Black talking points among us, as they get a couple of crumbs from the white supremacists, that's the thing that makes them valuable. You dig? So that white people can say, hey, look, I'm not racist. That Black guy over there, who's a spokesperson for Black society, he said the same thing I said. He said that the Blacks are lazy. And he's somebody who's somewhat of a Black leader. Now, when we call these tethers out and these tethers are ousted and we say, hey, Myron Gaines and Sneeko and these people, they're not us. They're not from our lineage. Therefore, they're not representatives of our culture. These people are outsiders. They do not represent us whatsoever. Do you know the delineation makes the Myron Gaines of the world completely damn useless? They are useless as hell to the white supremacists because since they are outsiders, the white supremacists can't use them as shields. 
You can't use them as a shield to say, hey, well, Myron Gaines said that black people are lazy, but Myron Gaines is not respected and he's not a part of foundational black American culture. He's an outsider like you. So you are two outsiders spewing anti-black racism. So he's not going to be your cover. You're basically co-signing another person who's anti-foundational black American. So you're just doubling down on your white supremacy by doing that. You see, that's why they, they kick Myron out of spaces and call him the N-word. He's useless to them. You see, when we delineate, we neutralize a lot of threats across the board. A lot of folks can't be used among us. Notice the Myron gangs, they get ousted by the white supremacists. Look how Candace Owens, how they've been ousting her out of white supremacist circles. That's why she's been trying to kind of snooze her way up in black circles trying to act like, you know, I just want what's best for black people. Get your crooked little wig ass on somewhere. No, you don't. You've been performing for white people. You're not saying anything that you thought was going to be beneficial to us. You are doing things to secure a bag for yourself. You're not going to come around us trying to act like you were the spook who sat by the door. We're not letting them run that game on us. You dig? Know? Delineation. We should have been delineating a long time ago. Claude Anderson was trying to tell us. And people try to shame us for delineating, talking about it's divisive. No. We have a lineage that other people don't have. They have a lineage we don't have. We're going to acknowledge and respect and recognize our lineage. Brother Marak, what's up, sir? Yo, what up, fam? What up, Tariq? Yeah, I'm good. I wanted to correct the record about um, Dusable. Uh, apparently, I found and I read something. It was a guy in 1951, a Haitian. Um, his name was Joseph Jeremy. He said that um, he was related to some degree to uh, Disable. So they've been going with that lie ever since to claim that he was Haitian, despite the fact during that uh, time, again, like you said, it was a French territory. Mm. And one last thing was also uh, there's another lie going around saying that Haitians were a part of the American Revolutionary War in 1779. But my question is, is who let um, enslaved Haitians in droves come to America to help us before they helped themselves? Mm, yep. Yes, so, uh, yeah, I land there. Good thing, yep. And plus, it wasn't even Haiti in 1799. It was still Saint-Domingue. It didn't become Haiti until 1804. And so they want to get real technical with some of the dates and names of things. You dig? Let's get um, let's get Holland Oates. Let's get Holland in the place. Holland Oates, and then we'll get Ben. Ben, Holland, what's happening? Hey, what's going on, Tree? I'm good. What's going on, man? Uh, that thing in, in North Carolina. First of all, man, I'm born and raised in South Carolina, so it doesn't surprise me at all about the Carolinas, man, and just how nasty and how racist it is. He's talking about Vance. I think it happened with Vance County. You know who Vance is? Zebulon B. Vance. Sounds familiar. Leader of the uh well, he was he was a Confederate general or whatnot, man. So I really don't understand how they can really say that somebody can hang themselves and do all like it's disgusting. It's disgusting, man. So I'm gonna tell you right now, family, we really gotta we really gotta start pulling ourselves together, man, our resources and uh and getting our stuff together, man, as far as that uh, either a pack or whatever you was talking about, man. Like we do, we really, we really do. I'm talking about some militia type stuff, man. We really got to start, really got to start protecting ourselves, man, and going out here and having each other's back, though. So that's all I want to throw in there, man. But yeah, if you if you know anything about uh, your Carolina's history and whatnot, man, I'm telling you, Vance, Vance County is bad news, baby. Bad news. Oh, my man, thank you so much. Um, Ben, Ben. What's up, brother Tyreek? How you doing, sir? Yes, we did put on the cape for Haitians. Remember, uh, it was under President Barack Obama in 2010 that Haitians were granted temporary protection status. And they still really have temporary protection status. I think Biden granted it, extended it. And so them receiving temporary protection status is a result of the political influence of Black Americans. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yes, indeed, man. We've been doing a lot for these groups, man. So that's why them coming around trying to blame us for the backlash that they're getting when they go to these cities and people are filming certain things and making police reports against them. Don't sit up here and point the finger to us. We ain't doing it. 
You dig? Holler at your people. Memphis, what's up, Memphis? Hey, man, yeah, I'm calling in from Memphis. Uh, we fought with y'all here. I'm trying to see you trying to jump on this song with me. What's the song? It's like it's a drill song. I do drill rap. I'm trying to see you trying to jump on the song with me. But I don't know. I don't know what's what's the name of your group. You could be part of T.S. Giselle's group or something. I don't know. No, I ain't with that shit. It's okay. Chopper Game. Okay. Well, we'll, we'll see. You know, send me some information about your group. All right. Because I don't know what y'all got going on out here. A lot of strange people calling. I don't know what kind of rap groups that you have. I don't know if it's a non-binary rap group. I don't know what it is. I don't know. It's three times moist. I don't know what it is. Salt and heifer. I don't know what you guys got going on. I don't know what y'all got going on. All right. Public enema, as John, <laughs> as John Witherspoon said in the house, public enema. T.S. Giselle is part of public enema, where they give enemas on stage. Uh, so we don't know what y'all got going on. <laughs> I don't know what these groups are out here. I don't know what y'all, I don't, I'm not going to commit to being on nobody's record. I don't know. I do not know what y'all got going on. It's too much soy milk being drank. I don't know what y'all got going on out here. But yeah, I don't know about your group, or your song. I don't know. Boykin, what's up, Boykin? Um, Boykin Spaniel. Hi. Uh, good afternoon. How are you? Hey, dear. How are you? I I'm well. Thank you. I'm. I just got off the phone with my local representative and chewed them out about this lynching that's going on. And yes, I did say lynching because that's what happened. Okay. Are you in North Carolina? No, I've got. Um, I've got a sister. And my elderly mother and other relatives in that area. Okay, got it, got it. That's good, that's good. Keep making noise. We need people to call down there and see what's going on. Um, we need to get to the bottom of this. We're not going to let these people cover it up, people who are there locally. You guys need to be boots on the ground over there at the crime scene investigating and observing what's going on. See what these people are trying to cover up. I, I know there's a heavy police presence over there. People need to see what's going on over there so we can see from a grassroots perspective. All right. Um, should I get one more call in here? Because um, uh, let me get one more call. Hold on. Wait one second. Wait one second. Hold on. Hold on. So somebody's calling me. All right, y'all bear with me one second. Um, let's get one more call. Let's get one more good one. One more call. All right. Okay, hold on one second. Uh, hold on. Uh, they hit me up from the museum. Some stuff going on at the museum today. Um, let me get one more call. Raise your hand, let me get one last call. And let's make it a good one. Let's get a uh, Miss um, Miss McCrimmon. Let's get Miss McCrimmon in here. Miss McCrimmon. I mean that you put me on. I'm actually born and raised from Henderson, North Carolina. Okay. So I wanted to tell you guys that I actually, although he had that noose around his neck, I'm not saying it's not probable, but I think it's very unlikely because that area is very, very, I don't know if people know, Henderson is very crime ridden city. It's a Democrat run city, like the typical, it's really, really bad for fentanyl, really, really bad for overdoses. And where he was found is a predominantly black area. White people usually don't even go over that side because it's mm. mostly black people. And so all I'm saying is, is that I think I find it very interesting that all this is going on. I do know the local sheriff's office and people that work in the sheriff's office, and we are asking questions, trying to get to the bottom of it. Um, but I will say, just look out for more details because although I do think it was some foul play, I would not be surprised if it was crime or drug related. Yes, indeed. All right. But thank you so much, beloved. I appreciate you. 
All right, y'all, let me get up out of here, guys. Um, look, go to hiddenhistorymuseum.com. Get tickets to join me here in L.A. tomorrow evening. we got a great event at the Hidden History Museum. Um, comedy, complimentary food, complimentary drinks, everything.